It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley are here. The uh, Microsoft quarterly results are in, and a big surprise. We'll have that in all the Windows news coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley, episode 320, recorded July 18th, 2013. Bingity bong binged it. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Shutterstock.com with over 26 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips. Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use the offer code WINDOWS7. It's time for Windows Weekly. Yes, it is. Yes, indeed. Yes, my friends, yes. The show that covers everything having to do with Microsoft, including... Windows Phone, because Paul Therott is the king of Windows Phone. Windows 8, Windows 8.1, Azure, because Mary Jo is the queen of Azure and Hadoop. Uh, uh, Xbox, Mary Jo is a big Xbox fan, we all know. Huge, huge. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Therott's here, the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. Mary Jo Foley from allaboutmicrosoft.com, the ZDNet blog. And we, these, between Paul and Mary Jo, they got, they got it covered. When it comes to Microsoft, you guys are the best in the bids. Uh, in fact, you know, it's funny, even on Twit, like, we frequently quote you as if you're a source. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we, we, we are. <laughs> you're, you're, a, you're like the, the source. It's great. So, um, ah, let's Plus, talk. I get to make funny graphics. <laughs> oh, do you have some? I have to just look at your site. I haven't seen your site. You see my today. Halo guy holding the coffee, the copy of Office three sixty five today. <laughs> yes. no, that's, that's funny. Good. Like I, that's I, good. I, I probably <laughs> I probably spent like you know sixty plus hours a week writing, and yet it's like the little Photoshop jobs that for some reason give me the greatest amounts of pleasure. So you do that stuff. You get to yeah. do that. Have fun. You know, I think uh, I, I noticed that All Things D is starting to take a, a, you know, they used to just put use images, stock images, and now they've started doing a little Photoshopping, too. So I think they're saying, you know that Therat's eating us alive. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, He's eating us alive. Me. Fear the Therat. So, uh, and we should mention that it's coming up at the uh, end of September at Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas. actually early October for the uh, IT Dev Connections, September 30th through October 4th. And when you go to see the... Halo guy holding the Office 365 uh, manual. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well should sign have him up holding for that. a copy of my book. I screwed yeah, this one what up. are you thinking? Yeah, come see you Paul should. and Mary Jo in Poison. And I think, oh, I haven't. I'm pretty sure we're. I haven't talked to anybody in power, but I'm pretty sure we're going to do a live Windows Weekly from that show as well. In, uh, nice. Yeah. So that all is excitement plus. Meanwhile, plus plus. meanwhile, Nokia has announced its uh, quarterly earnings, and you say good news and bad news. What's the yeah. good news? Mary Jo, <laughs> do you want to take news. the good news part? <laughs> good news, and then Paul, because he's such a cheerful fellow, can do the bad. No, actually, see, I was defending this on Twitter, and all you know, it's like all these people are really down on Nokia today. I I think they're doing fine, but please continue. Yeah. I mean, we can do the good news pretty quick. They're losing less money. Yay. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was like I did it. <laughs> I, it was. I could have done it. No, if wrong. you did it, you would have gone, yay. <laughs> yeah, yay. Uh, I, yay. Okay. That'd no, be the they, only they're difference. Selling, they're selling more phones. They're selling Lot more Lumia's and Windows phones, right? Which In Russia, Windows, Windows phone is, is tops. It is, and India too, and there's a whole there's it's a whole like handful in, in of Russia, countries. Russia, Windows Phone by <laughs> sells you, you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this no, because actually, no major carrier in Russia will carry the iPhone, but yeah, who cares? You who take cares? Your Doesn't matter why. No. And there is a brisk uh, gray market for iPhones, but Windows Phone is tops, right? With like ten percent yep. of the market almost. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and then the other good news was there are more there were more, more Lumias sold in this quarter by Nokia than all BlackBerry 
headphones. So <laughs> Oh, that's sad. Come on, we're trying to get any little good news. Oh, that can. is <laughs> that is a backhanded compliment if ever I there actually, was no, one. No, no, no. I think that's we're an important three. milestone because they are now number three, and we can kind of make jokes about it, but I they, okay, they that's fair. Selling. They are. That's fair. And and by the way, you know, Rim just launched a new platform today. Uh, today, I'm sorry, this year. And uh, Windows Phone 8 is significantly outselling. But uh, is this really because Windows Phone 8 is doing so well or because BlackBerry is doing so crappy? It's a little bit of both, Leo. <laughs> That's why it's a, you know, if you, if you said, oh, hey, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe against no, BlackBerry I mean, and we look, beat him in the I, marketplace, I, that would be one thing, but it's not my, really. Microsoft beat Netscape in the 1990s. Was it because IE was better than Netscape or was it because Netscape no, screwed up? but that was a fair head-to-head -head competition. They beat. A little bit of both. But, but they oh, beat. No, but, them they gave it away for free is how they beat them okay but if I'm you just, start giving you know, away windows phone hey there's a strategy by the way I, it's, that's an excellent idea and i'd like to pursue that one but um no i, I it's things are things are rarely black and white i mean it is nuanced i mean you know they sold almost twice as many lumia handsets in this quarter as they did in the same quarter a year ago that's, that's amazing. good doubling that's amazing. is good yep. You know, for, uh, that's amazing. They sold significantly, I think the number, I don't remember the exact number, but the uh, significant more, significantly more phones this quarter than they did in the previous quarter, you know, 5.6 to 7.8. And they predicted that they will sell more again in the current quarter. So it's, it's, you know, it's on the right trajectory. The trend is your friend. It is. Yep. It, and it's good to see the upward trend because as we Windows Phone users know, it hasn't been upward lately right. at all right. pretty much since they launched Windows Phone. Right. Right. <laughs> so so yeah we're happy we're happy that it's gaining traction and that Nokia is doing well since that's the biggest by far of all the Windows Phone platforms so that's good and good news. there is no question that Nokia and uh, the is now seen as a cutting edge phone mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. also a good I think the Lumia 1020 you could argue that the 925 and the 920 before it were certainly um, very competitive right. phones, but the yep. 1020 now leaps them ahead in many different kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, I, I would go even a step further and say that the big change that's occurred this year is that they went from having a reasonably well-rounded lineup of phones to having a pretty incredible collection of phones at various price points, including a phone that you can buy for as little as $130 without a contract which is an amazing device for that price, um, all the way up to the craziest phone uh, camera thing ever made. I mean, you know, with a 41 megapixel yeah. camera and all of that stuff. I mean, it is and everything in between, you know, depending on where you live, uh, which country you live, you obviously have a slightly different selection and uh, depending on your carrier. But uh, and, and there are exceptions, you know, Sprint isn't exactly great right now, but I, I would say across the board for the most part you have a pretty amazing selection of Lumia devices now, which was not the case a year ago. It definitely was not the case a year ago. Not the case. Mm -hmm. So I, to me, this is all great news. And of course, more to come. You know, they kind of hinted at the 1020 event that there would be future product launches coming soon as well. And there we go. You got it in a nutshell. Our if you owner. expect me to leap in and save you guys, I'm not going to. I'm just going to let him <laughs> do. I've written a book for you people. <laughs> uh, actually, we, before the show, Paul admitted something very important to us, which is that he's sitting looking at the last page. He's practically ready to type the end on the you typewriter. Awful about it? So it's not the last page literally in the book. It's the last page I'm going to write. So it's uh. actually... Close to the beginning of the book. Oh, actually, actually, that's not even fair to you. I do have to write a short introduction as well. But um, it is the most boring, awful topic that I could not care oh, less about. You put about. it off, and didn't I you? Just have to. You put it off. Just you know. <laughs> what is it? What's the most boring? It. What is it? I don't want to say. Let's think. Not. What could it be, Mary Jo? <laughs> what could be the most boring just, thing you could write about a phone? Topic. Basic information. How to phone. use the dialer. Yeah, no, yeah. I wrote that. A long time ago. <laughs> That was That's way it. more interesting than what I'm writing now. Look at this video. Hmm. That's boring. Whatever it is, that's boring. I'm just tired of writing about this kind of stuff. It just Paul writes happen. books like David Lean makes movies. He doesn't do it in order. <laughs> okay, I had to think about that one. For I wonder a if anybody right. does it in order. That's kind of an interesting question. Don't you, you always do the easy pick, part? You know? Sometimes you're in the mood. I, I wrote my books in order pretty much. Did but you? but they were almanacs, so they were the, mm -hmm. it was uh, chronological. The book was actually chronological, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Um, there are huge problems not doing it in order. Um, you write yeah. things differently for one thing, but you you have to constantly assume you are going to reference things that you say you're going to, right? Yes. So in the early days, I used to have all these kind of uh, notes to myself, like, <laughs> don't forget. Uh, don't forget that you mentioned you were going to do this. Uh, CF if it's page there, X, like X, X. Yeah. As we mentioned in page XXX. Yeah, you didn't do that. You didn't do that. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't write my book in sequence either. Um, I, I picked the parts that were easiest first oh, and yeah. left out the hard parts till the end, which is a mistake. <laughs> Gina, Gina yep, Trapani uh, wrote an article paraphrasing Mark Twain. He says, if you eat a frog for breakfast in the morning, then you can safely say that you the <laughs> worst is up. over. <laughs> yeah. Start with this tough That's stuff. That's how you cook the frog, actually. <laughs> actually frog's yeah. legs for breakfast would not yeah. be bad. Um, that's interesting, yeah. So you eat dessert first. Life is short. Yeah. Eat dessert first because you never know. You never know. You get hit by a bus. <laughs> and then you wouldn't have to write the boring chapters. These are interesting life philosophies. It's <laughs> it's kind of the glass half full versus half empty. I thing. always told my kids, easy, hard, hard, easy. Which is if you if you do the easy part first, then you got the hard part okay. lighter. Actually, and that's, so it's easier to do the hard part first than the easy part is you just... Since we're, since we're on this topic, I will yeah. say that the uh, the guy who got me into writing, and I did, let me think about this, this is literally 20 years ago, um, when we were working on our first book together, explained to me that, because <laughs> he had written one book previously, that he would write for one hour, and then he would play a video game for 30 minutes. Yeah. And then he would write for one hour. <laughs> and yeah. so uh, the game that we played that year while we were writing that first book was Return of Kaffel Wolfenstein. Wow. That, uh, <laughs> right? You mean That's the online. original one? The yeah. one where the, the, the well, Nazis the, go, no, the 3D oh, one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> mein Leben, you know that one. Oh, yeah, okay. So that was a little later. The first one Not was, the Apple II, was, it was on 8-bit sounds. So all the, the people, oh, oh. <laughs> That yeah. is a great game. Wolf is C 3D you played, yeah. And that's why, great game. I mean, that game, like, I we we mass, we found, like, every secret in it. We did, you know. Yeah, because it was anything. And we wrote a book. Anything was better than writing a book. <laughs> well, we also wrote the book. Anything was better than the Delphi Bible. Was that what the Delphi Bible? It was Bible? a few books before the Delphi Bible. Wow. But yeah. Wow. So there you go. Wow. Um, and people can, by the way, see the progress of this book because it is online, windowsphonebook.com. It is online. Yeah. It's very close. It's very close. That's neat. There's nothing better, uh, to, to quote somebody else, the best part about writing is having written. Yes. <laughs> Nothing better than finishing. Now, are I'm you going to... What am I on here? Let me look at it. Do you have a lot of revisions after this? I think... Oh, yeah, yeah. There's more to come. I, but I think I have published 66 or 65 milestone, you know, copies of the book, like versions of the book. What? Since lately. Like, I've, I've you know, as I write it, I publish a new... Oh, book. I see. What, are you using Git or something? <laughs> <laughs> No. Using some sort of no, you know what, Gina Smith and I, we were, we were thinking about writing a um, a book together, and we it actually installed Subversion, it wasn't mm -hmm. out yet, and uh, and we were going to use that as a way to um, write together. Well, didn't no. really didn't work. You but. know, in, in in the front, actually, I'm gonna add, I am gonna add this as a joke. You know, in the front of a book of fiction, it says uh, this is a work of fiction. None of the right. people, places, or situations are real. I'm right. gonna. I'm going to do like a joke take on that where it's like this is a work of nonfiction. All of the everything. events and people and everything in here are in fact real. <laughs> These and, screenshots you know. actually happened. Yeah. Your ability to duplicate the experience, however, <laughs> we do not guarantee. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Somebody, I can't, you know, the, I, the, I just, uh, uh, somebody in the chat room is saying, hey, guys, this is supposed to be about Windows, not book writing. Oh. Yep. Fair enough. That's no, right. that's not fair enough. <laughs> Goodbye, Windows 8 guy. I hope you find a nice <laughs> podcast in your right. future. Um, Someone has to talk about Windows Phone. <laughs> yeah. Eldar. Eldar yeah. M, which sounds Let's like a villain him. from Superman. Star Trek. Or yeah. Star Trek, yeah. He is a, he is it's a like, villain. Like a guy with like an alien with a unibrow thing. <laughs> Eldar! What, you guys what? know Eldar, right? Eldar Mertazin, is that how you pronounce his last mm. name? This guy who has been in disputes in the past with Nokia, legal disputes, and works on... Well, uh, site called Mobile Review. He was circulating a rumor this week saying Microsoft was thinking about going back to scratch with Windows Phone 9 and just scrapping everything no, they've done to date. that's BS. By the way, that <laughs> you, would be great news for my book. Yeah. yeah that would be just awesome. in time for Paul to release a book about the old version. 
Right. Oh. So I've been asking around about this because you know what? You never can say never to anything. But everybody I've been talking to around, all my sources say no, 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 not correct. And, uh, you know, I, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about what Microsoft's doing with phone and, and the whole idea of creating the more common platform underneath, you know, like making making the NT core, the, the bottom layer, and then making the app platform above that more common with uh, Windows 8 and with the Xbox OS. So, you know, to some people, maybe that looks like scrapping everything. I don't know. Well, why uh, I don't want a Blades uh, operating <laughs> system on my phone. <laughs> Really? Well, you know what, though? I, I, I do think they're going to move these things closer and closer they are. together. But, they but are. who gets eventually who goes gonna have which some way? Kind of a, uh, Windows RT and Windows Phone. You know, the, the, right. the, the, there, there will be commonalities. There are already commonalities. There'll be more of them. Eventually, they may literally have this, you know, support the same two runtimes and, or the, yeah. and go forward with one of them or whatever, however they do it. And at some point, many people, and I'm sure Mary Jo and I will both write something along these lines will say something like, yep, this is what they should have done all along. You know, is, yeah. but, you know, you can't, uh, we, we don't work at Microsoft. We don't know the intricacies of the, uh, the strategy and the technologies and maybe th what they are doing, which seems so obvious years down the road, is not possible right away. And so I think we're going to get there. It's just, uh, yeah. you know, it's just a path. As the unibrow guy in the chat room just pointed out, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Isn't Windows 8 phone the inspiration for everything else? It all seems to be moving upstream from the phone, not the other kind way of, around, right? In a way, <laughs> right. Like yeah. the tiled UI was the phone first, right? So that, And there's precedent that, for that. Apple's yeah. uh, operating system is heavily influenced by the iPhone yeah. on up. Uh, because the future really is touch interfaces, and that's where it is yeah. sure. most clearly right. implemented. I don't but think a know, touch Xbox is in the future. I, God, I hope not. No. I mean, I, I don't think it means necessarily the operating system is going to be the exact same on all the platforms. All it really means is the core is the same, the API level is the same, the look and feel is more similar. But it doesn't really mean like the Windows operating system in full is on all of these platforms. Right. Like, you know, the, the way so they is that the, where they would go, you think? They'd make a, a unified kernel for everything and it would... They're already doing that. Yeah. So that are, would make uh, sense that then, then yeah. Mulder would be not so far off. No. Well, he, you know, I think I think he kind of was whipping people into a frenzy this week saying, you know, the way Microsoft had the reset um, from when it went from Windows Mobile to Windows Phone. And then again, when they had to make some very big changes from Windows Phone 7 to Windows Phone 8, and they had right. to say, hey, right. some of you guys aren't going to get the right. upgrade, right? They've done it twice so, now. That's right. I know. So he's whipping people into a frenzy about this. And people are saying, oh, forget it. I don't want Windows Phone. I'm going to have to scrap everything again. And that does not seem to be the case. We, we already know, in fact, because Microsoft has said this publicly, when Windows Phone 8.1, the blue version, comes out, it's going to run all your apps. It's not going to make you have to do anything to, you know, some people get it, some people don't. It's not going to be that. So we are we already know that's not happening. And, and, and you know, as far as when is Windows Phone 9, we have no idea. I mean, he, he was saying 2015. We don't really know. We don't know if they're going to continue, like, you know, go Windows Phone 8.1, well, Windows Phone 8.2. I mean, right. nine could be way down the road. It could be way, way down the yeah, road. That's a good point. We don't know. Uh, yeah. So this is really, this is kind of a meaningless. Uh, it is, but I, th I think we need to kind of dispute it because Microsoft, you know, when we're asking them to dispute it, all they're saying is we don't comment on rumors. Oh, um, come on, so Microsoft. I wish they would say, I know they can't mm -hmm. dispute You want to reassure, it, it's developers that are most concerned, right? I it mean, is. It's, it's it is. not, we're not talking end users. Yeah. But, but yeah. so that's a very special market that you can speak to directly and say, hey, Leo, look, you're guys. suggesting that transparency is good for developers. <laughs> don't I understand consumers. They don't want to tell consumers anything because <laughs> they might change their buying habits or something stupid like that. But you want to keep developers right. in the know. That's why Apple, when they do the Worldwide Developers Conference, kicks the press out and says, this is ND8, and you men are not talking about it. And then they can be very free with what they're talking about, future plans. Uh, but Microsoft doesn't do that at Build. They don't. They don't, say, they don't do NDA sessions. They don't do NDA. No, see, they, in fact, they publish all the sessions in full on their site, see, and I anybody like that can look at them. Yeah. Yep. My, well, Apple does that, but you have to be a developer. 
to look at it, right? Yeah. And you have to agree to the terms. You can't then go to the press, although it all right. leaks out eventually anyway, I guess. Yeah, didn't their whole, uh, didn't their whole conference yeah. get leaked yeah, to yeah, yeah. Basically, <laughs> all he posted it, it gets leaked. Yeah. So I, guess. I actually watched two of those videos before they got pulled, so they were up there for a while. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's like watching a Windows phone video. It was like the same exact stuff, like typography, right. white space. Yeah, I mean, it was the like same. the same content. Mobile is development is mobile development. It's not, you know. Well, I guess. It's, but, not, yeah. uh, it's not rocket surgery, as Colleen used to say. Uh, so we've dismissed uh, Eldar the Magnificent. Eldar, I think Eldar is overstating the case. On this episode of Mythbusters. <laughs> dun, dun. Yeah. yeah. That's what the M stands for, the Magnificent. <laughs> uh, uh, and then... Um, so who's got this article? Wireless carriers finally making smartphones affordable. You know, I have to say, when you look at the, are, are you talking about the the jump program from T-Mobile and then AT and T's uh, response yep. to that? Next or whatever, yeah. Yeah, The Verge and uh, a couple of people have done some math. Yeah, well, right as you should. Not yep. so good. No. Sure. <laughs> Well, it depends, though. It's if you're someone who wants uh, does want to upgrade more regularly, and I, I do think there's a a pretty big percentage of our population that is uh, our population, meaning people who listen to this podcast, who uh, are kind of gadget happy and would upgrade more frequently. And, um, you know, paying a little bit more to do that is yeah, I'm paying a lot more uh, than an option right that now. a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, that's what happens. Right. Yeah. So if you're in the middle of a two year contract and the iPhone six comes out or whatever they're calling the next one, um, that's 600 bucks <laughs> right. you know, to start. And it's a lot of money. And so the ability to pay a little bit more and then just be able to upgrade uh, normally turns out to be years. a lot more. <laughs> okay. It's like three thousand dollars in that two over the two year. Uh, okay. You know, the question is really maybe you'd be better off. You should do the math first because you might be better off just buying outright unlocked phones. Yeah, and actually that's the little note I added at the end. I mean, I, I don't know as much about the other parts of the market. I, I know Apple doesn't actually do this, and and uh, I'm not sure about Android, but you know. There's an interesting recent trend with these Nokia devices where they're starting to offer low-end phones contractless, right? So 520, 521, and the 620 as well, which is under $200. Uh, you can buy a, a, a really uh, kind of a decent phone for not a lot of money. And I and it, this is interesting timing for me because uh, everyone except for me on, in my family is on um, Verizon. And we've got a teenager who is not careful about anything. And then we've got a kid who's almost a teenager who is also not careful about anything. And <laughs> Mark has taken this. My son has taken this what used to be a $500 phone and has turned it into a crack screen bent at the bottom of a toilet. Um, we've, we've had it sitting in a bowl of rice to dry it out, you know, so we can use it again. And I'm thinking, you know, it'd be interesting if you could just buy something that wasn't super expensive and not really worry about it, you know, whereas... Um, you know, he just beats the crap out of these things. Like he's just so, for, it's just, the thing falls out of his pocket. It ends up at, it's in the back of someone's car. It's, it was left at the beach one time. Well, it is, it, it's, it's really troubling to buy a smartphone for uh, kids. Yeah, yeah. And certain adults. <laughs> it's not just yes. this that we should yes. point out. There are, there are accident prone adults. Alex well. Gumpel, for example, should never be allowed to have a <laughs> Oh my God, he's already broken his phone in, in a week again. <laughs> I heard oh, really? he has a kin now. He was telling me that today. Well, he got the kin after the first break, and then I guess yeah. he got another HTC 8X, and yeah. that's cracked. I'm more starting oh, to wonder. Oh, man. He... What? Yeah, so so Liz broke the first one inadvertently, yeah, no, and the second one's already broken. The oh, replacement. Was this, another, this wasn't Liz's fault? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, he dropped it. I've dropped mine mm. so many times, and we got in a plane not, with this just guy. Bad luck. What, the, what were we thinking? Uh, he's but pot, yeah, you let him fly <laughs> you around. It, it's not his fault. Uh, all of these phones, they have big plates of glass on the front, and if you hit it wrong, there's sure. nothing anybody can do. Yeah. Dow from Dow Corning on down, you cannot Leo, make. I, I I hear you, but I have dropped my phone numerous times to amazing heights. I have never broken a screen on any phone. Ever. Oh, now, well, now that lucky. I've said that, you're just, yeah, I will, of course, well, bad, be bad <laughs> mistake. You just blew it, kid. Leo, mark my words, I will <laughs> never. <laughs> ah, it's unsinkable, he says. I, in fact, while we talk, I'm going to juggle some of my phones. No, I mean, I. I <laughs> With a chainsaw. <laughs> yeah. No, I have right. uh, my phone in. Um, it's funny because. Uh, and and I don't really care because I'm going to have a new phone every few months anyway. It's just part of the sure. part of the gig. 
I buy, you know, and I buy what I buy is Euro generally is European unlocked. I don't uh, get them from the carriers. And you pay do you buy yes. Through expenses or what do you expenses, buy? Expenses, yeah. And you pay six hundred bucks. Sometimes a, a premium if you're ordering something that's you know you're the pre-order. Um, and then I buy the cheapest. And I have uh, self-flown plants from all four carriers because uh, you know for reasons of testing. And I just always buy the cheapest plan a across the board. And then just yep. it's nice and easy with T-Mobile and AT&T because you just pop a SIM in. Right. Uh, it's a little harder with uh, uh, Verizon. You have to make a trip to the you know phone store necessary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but I, but like this is a Galaxy S4 is in like an armored case with a door and stuff. You know, I mean, it's not. I could, I don't have to worry about it that much. But um, uh, nevertheless, you know, because this is this is going to be here gone in a month anyway. So, yep. Just because it's the nature of the business, and that's one of the things that's very exciting. But I have to say, if you just bought a 925 or a 928 at Verizon, and you suddenly, Nokia says, oh, by the way, this 1020 is 41 megapixels, you might kind of be freaky. I don't know. It's an interesting challenge. Mm. Yep. Yeah, and I think that's what the point of these. Yes. So you're going to pay a little more. You, you're required with T-Mobile to buy a 10 buck a month replacement plan. That is, by the way, one benefit of this is it, it's also insurance. So you can break it. Yeah. So for somebody like Alex, <laughs> might be let's face it, probably doesn't qualify for insurance anymore. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, you got to read the fine print on those because there's a deductible, a big deductible in some cases, and you can only do it like once or twice a year. He's uninsurable. Yeah, he's done. I think AT and T is going to be like, you know, maybe you would be better off at a different carrier. He's on a do not sell list when he walks yeah. into the store. They go, Gumpel, Gumpel, G. Oh yes, sir. thank you very much. See you. Bye. It's the type of thing where they like cut up your license and hand it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nokia's new contract free phone. So Nokia's well, doing is this from a carrier or from Nokia? Uh, What's the 520, yeah, 521? Both, I guess. What's the I, deal I, there? I bought it. You you actually the 521 is the one that's available in the US. So you can buy it on Amazon. It's $129. It actually comes in a T-Mobile box, and it has a T-Mobile SIM in it, ah. and then you can activate it or not your choice. Um, it's funny for that price. You know, I've had, uh, I've had a bunch of people ask me, you know, you could use this kind of like an iPod Touch if you wanted to, and actually that's a pretty good point. It's oh. it's an interesting phone as a second device. You know, right. if you want to, which is actually how I use my old Windows Phone now. Uh, I use it for podcasts and music and stuff, and it's I've actually got like a Windows Phone, you know, like a how does this to, how does this compare to an, an eight or seven, an 820 or yeah. a 928? So it, it, you're going to, the, the places you're going to see a hit are the RAM. So it's 512 megabytes of RAM uh -huh. instead of one gig. That's going to limit you just to some games. Um, it has a very small amount of internal storage, eight gigabytes, but it's got micro SD, so you can go up to 64. There's no front facing camera. So for people who do want to do that stuff, Skype or whatever, that's not there. Um, the back facing camera is five megapixels. It's decent. But no flash. What? Uh, and, and, really? And, wow. Yeah, no flash at all. Like not wow. even a. Yeah, you know, like I'm kind of. Like, so you got that. Um, but it's Windows Phone 8. It's. It, well, I should say it, it doesn't have NFC. It doesn't have uh, wireless charging. And I don't think you can buy a shell. Although the the back panel does come off, and so you could purchase different color, you know, backs if you wanted to do that kind of thing. But and it's you know it's it's uh, does it say that you still have it up on the screen? I'm not sure how big the screen is. Maybe four, four inches. Three inches. It's four inches. Four inches. Yeah. So it's not a huge phone, but it's it's also not a tiny phone. No, it's a um, decent phone. I mean, the yeah, iPhone's four pretty, inches, and it's it's you know it's it's a Lumia, right? So it's got this when you you when you hold it, you can just feel it. It's got a it's got a nice kind of you know feel to it. It's just it, it's it's a now, decent phone. It would be great for kids, and it would be great for a second. Yeah, and I think the real market, and everybody's going to do this. In fact, they say uh, Apple's even going to do this. The real market is they've saturated. The, the the knuckleheads will pay six hundred bucks for a phone. <laughs> Us. 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 You might say. <laughs> they've hit, they've topped that market. It's topped out, and yeah, so yeah. now they're saying, well, how do we get the other five billion people on the planet to buy a smartphone? Yep. And this is the response is very inexpensive. You know, lower lower spec. They can't. You know, the truth is, you can't you can't make the spec too low because you got to run the OS. Right. Um, well, but you've got to make I mean, a differentiator, it, otherwise everybody's going to buy the cheap one. Honestly, you know, Win Windows Phone 8, uh, you, you, you see processors that are up to 1.5 gigahertz, um, dual cores, where we're at. 
Uh, one gig of RAM is the is where they kind of max out, except on the 1020. Um, this is, you know, uh, something like a 720, which was you know kind of a mid-level phone internationally, has roughly the same specs. I mean, it's um, it's a thinner kind of you know it's a nicer phone in some ways. It's also a lot more expensive. Um, it's really not a horrible phone. I don't really think that there are any like super cheap, ter- like cheap in the sense of cheaply made really bad phones like on the windows phone side right. it's one of those nice things about it i mean even a, a basic windows phone is right it's actually really nice well but that's why you take things like the flash out or you do a five megapixel camera because you can't yeah. <clears throat> there's really a very so narrow you, you area to, that you can work you in with the awesome. processor and, and ram yep. Yep. so you uh, and it's kind of artificial it's like making a celeron Remember in the <laughs> old is. days, Intel would take a Pentium chip. They'd take out the cash and say, here, it's a Celeron. <laughs> it's kind of like that. you got to make a differentiation, but you can't make it too stupid or nobody's going to want it. Smaller, yep. no flash, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's more than adequate, it sounds. So is this going to be your main phone? No. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, what, is your, what is your day-to-day? Uh, it's the 920. The 920. Yeah. And and uh, Mary Jo using the eight eight X right eight X yeah yep both excellent are you both are either of you thinking of going to a ten twenty uh, yeah, well we're both supposed fact, to get them pretty soon oh because yeah. you went to the right. event that's right yeah yeah I told these guys you know I'm, I, I I reminded them today you know I'm going to Europe um, in about a week <laughs> now and, would uh, be a good time this would be a great time <laughs> to deliver it because if that happens right. I will use this as my yes, camera just when I'm think. there this will yeah. be my phone like just, I'll use it for yeah yeah. yeah. Um, and but it goes on sale next week too, right? Like it's, it's July twenty sixth yeah. for Verizon. For whom? No, yeah, uh, I mean if, ATT. ATT, ATT, yeah, of course. Yeah, if, they, if, they, if this does, if they don't come through, which you know, Nokia and Microsoft, I don't know, we'll see. But um, <laughs> I would certainly buy one locally, right? Which would be a great thing to do on the eve of a trip. You know, spend six hundred bucks on a phone. My wife would be ecstatic. It's your job, dude. It's tax deductible. <laughs> you know? Let the taxpayers uh, subsidize it, Paul. Sure. That's my advice to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I may. Well, I, I will if I have to. I mean, I, you know, I'd like to take this thing to Europe. So. Ah, yeah. It does. It, uh, do we know what the uh, price is going to be uh, subsidized from AT and T? Is it three hundred? Uh, Two ninety nine. Yeah, it's yeah, three hundred bucks. bucks. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's not inexpensive. It's not a. Uh, and of course, you don't qualify for in any way for a subsidy. Uh, no. You're, <laughs> Paul is no, Paul no. is a smartphone one percenter. It's like you ask that question at the AT and T store, and they kind of look at the yeah. screen and they look at you, and they're you know, like, "You got to go at least a month." <laughs> You're joking, right? You just, sir, you they're bought like, a you, phone in March. You haven't even taken the plastic wrap off of the front of the phone you're using I know. now. It's you true. Know? It's so embarrassing. <laughs> so embarrassing. Yeah. You know what I do, and this is even worse. I shouldn't admit this, but uh, you know, I have a family plan, so we have I think yeah. four phones on AT and T. So I yeah. just steal the upgrades from my kids. <laughs> So I actually have two lines. Um, I don't share them with my kids, um, but neither one of them are. <laughs> Henry's going to be really disappointed when he says, Dad, I've had this phone for two years. It's time for a new one. No. Mm, yeah. Really. Mm, sorry about that. You no, know, they've doubled that time now. It's I've got a kin, however, that you can have. <laughs> it's barely used. Mm. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. What is the actual cost of the 1020? You think? You think it costs unsubsidized? Do you think it's 600? I believe it's is it more. 600. I think that was. See, everything seems to be yeah. in that price range. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's not. It's not inexpensive. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we've been talking uh, over the last six months about the uh, the tumbling PC market, and some of that is uh, semantics. Um, you know, what is a PC and all of that. And really, one way to look at this, I think, is to look at Intel, since. Yeah. I think it would be a fairer way to say uh, to divide the market between ARM processors and x86 processors and say x86, not even say PC, but just say x86 sales, ARM sales, you know, because ARM's mobile, tablet. Well, uh, Intel would like there not to be ARM sales. I know. So <laughs> I, that's I know. the central issue. I, yeah. I, you know, uh, and by the way, for all this talk about the PC market and Intel's earnings, which we'll get into. Uh, one of the things you can look at is uh, how well does Intel do in the smartphone market? They don't and have the a presence at all. Is, Intel's in the smartphone market. There is, there's and zero. Actually, yeah, they are. And they like are. Zero. Well, yeah, they lose. They lost like six hundred and eight million dollars. I mean, <laughs> they don't really. You can't think of a single example of an Intel chip on a phone. No, I mean they did the scale processor, hoping to get mobile. Mm -hmm. uh, but nobody's going to put an Atom or a Celeron in that. In fact, uh, you know, 
Although, you know, uh, Steve Jobs considered putting an atom in the iPad when that was in development, and, uh, you know, things could change. But as of today... I think that was pro forma. I think they have such a... Uh, Apple and Intel have such a close relationship yeah. that they had to look at the Intel. Just look at it, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. I'm sure Apple came back to them and said, you're kidding, right? This, <laughs> we can't sell something with a one-hour battery life. It's, it, just, people want more. Well, no, actually, Adam gets great battery life. It's <laughs> just, it? okay. uh, it's just not very fast. It does it at the expense of performance, yeah. Yeah. The Lumia 1020, according to Rev in the chat room, is uh, 659.99, which is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. Given that, yeah. given that uh, well, it's, chip, it's 50 bucks more than the iPhonean prices. iPhonean. Yeah. <laughs> That's an iPhonean. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, what is? Uh, tell us how Intel did, and what does it mean? There's one thing they said in their uh, call. Brian Krasnich, the new CEO said that he hopes that uh, he's going to see x86 plus android mm -hmm. there's only one not to my knowledge uh, device that's the same he's got to be the only person on earth looking forward to that and android <laughs> I, is an r is i mean i guess you could get android running on x86 i this is i think they build the dumbest thing i've ever heard i don't know how samsung's doing it are they you uh, mentioned this poor guy this guy just took over intel right yeah. it would be like Aye. taking over the world's biggest cruise liner company just as planes were taking off you know i mean like it, it's it doesn't mean it's over for intel i mean i think think you know like i said they could have a, a massive play in mobile and should i don't know why they haven't but um more even more so than microsoft i would say that this company is just is or is just perceived as being that kind of old school PC company. Like they, it's like they can't shake it. Chatroom's telling me there are x86 uh, Android devices, uh, including I didn't know this, the Galaxy Note three. Really? Oh wow! Well. I don't think that's true, but they, they they're saying that, and the chat room never lies. You can of course <laughs> recompile. It's, there's no question you can recompile Android for x86. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying how many people are building that? Yeah. Right. The AT well, uh, presumably would be one. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, we'll uh, see. But biggity, so far, biggity bong, who I trust with my life, <laughs> says uh, Android uh, on x86 is an example is the uh, Logitech Google TV. <laughs> which, no, that's which, yeah. which four of us bought. Unbelievable. But that makes sense because that's always plugged in, right? That's always on. Always, uh, you know, it's not a mobile device. Yeah, Galaxy Tab 3 is... Tab 3, not Note 3. I'm sorry, yes. Tab 3. Tab yep. 3. Uh, X86. Yeah. I'm surprised uh, we can't keep those tablets uh, straight. Yeah, well, it's not like there are <laughs> 1,300 versions yeah, of them. Yeah, the Tab 3 yeah. uh, will be launched tomorrow in oh. India. So that's yeah, the confidence that uh, Samsung has in that device. <laughs> Intel probably has a mission accomplished sign that they've hung <laughs> on the corporate headquarters. You know what's celebrate. weird is how much it looks like. Uh, the reason we're confused, look at it. It looks just like a Galaxy phone. Mm. Yeah. I mean, just. Exactly. Yeah. So what differentiates a tab tablet from a Galaxy tablet? Does anybody know? Is it like just the pen? Yeah, the Note has a pen. The tab does okay. not. This, no these are 7, 8, and 10.1 inch. Yep. Um, it will... Uh, By the way, I, I, I got an ad from Samsung in the mail for what I believe a was this a is, dishwasher. <laughs> oh, yeah. Samsung <laughs> no, makes fridges, right? everything. Yeah. Yeah. So it's okay that they do that. Like, I, I don't... You know, some people make fun of them for making dishwashers or fridges or whatever they make. Like, I don't care about it. But why would you send me that ad? Like, am, did I have a good experience? You bought experience something with from Samsung, Samsung before, tablet, didn't and now you? I want you to wash my clothing or something. Like, I it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, man. So um, it's like Sony selling insurance in Asia. You know, like it doesn't. I, I got to point out, biggity bong, that according to this story, uh, these are not running x86 processors. It's running a Marvell uh, in one and an Exynos in another. These are uh, ARM devices as well where did you see mary joe that it uh... i just um binged it i oh. binged no i googled um... probably biggity bong binged it too like <laughs> <laughs> i googled uh x86 intel tab and um a lot of links came up okay so maybe by the there's... way i just it, by the way i just want to be clear about something mary yes. joe actually does say the phrase i binged stuff i binged she it. actually says that. i only this... say it to annoy you though 
Okay, because I was going to say, the only <laughs> other place I've ever seen it is in what is clearly the product ads. placement in a TV show. Oh, yeah. It's really the, He's the, like, the TV oh, does shows? anybody know how somebody gets uh, this disease? Oh, I don't it. know, let's bing it. You know, like, like, like this is a thing. You know, like, we're going to bing no. it. No, I only say it to annoy you, trust me. <laughs> okay, I do get a little... Like kind of a Annoying. chill up my spine every time you say it for some reason. I know. Uh, it here it is. So the current shipping ones, the ones that are coming out today, are ARM processor based. Okay. Quoting uh, this uh, story from DNA India where it's being released, uh, there are chances that the 10.1 inch Intel powered tablet could be heading our way sometime later. So that's not out yet, but it's just okay. It's you know anyway. when you have ten point one inches you could put enough battery in there that, and that I again I want to say you could divide that market much better than PC and tablet or PC and phone with x eighty six arm that's the division. But why would you? I mean, well because would, then would you a, could say an there's an Android app run on that thing. Yeah, you have to recompile it for x eighty six. Then why would you do it? Right. I mean, because yeah, you'd have to have a separate arm. store, wouldn't you? Yeah. That's why, yeah. who wants oh, well. that. Well, that's a good Microsoft point. Microsoft has one store, right, for ARM and Intel-based they apps. Do. For they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So no, but Android do. doesn't. I mean, there's no there's no Android right. market for x right. six apps. I mean, no. it's like you have, have all have your the own. advantages of yeah. Android, except for the apps, yeah. which I believe yeah. is the only advantage of Android. I that just seems crazy to me. Yeah. Well, but let's get let's get back to the important bit of this yeah. conversation. Which yes, is Mary Jo, a great note. <laughs> yeah, you know, I want to talk about this because. Yeah. Um, I saw Dr. Pizza and, and Paul and a few other people talking about this. So, you know, on Intel's earning call, they really talked up how they're excited about the low end of the market. Like, we're going to have these sub $400 uh, ultrabooks and it's going to be great. They've been saying that all year, yeah. And, but, I'm, you know what, they're, we are not alone. There's a category of us out there who would pay a lot of money for a nice Windows laptop. Right. And yeah. I am so sick of hearing, wait, we can get the price really down and it's going to be awesome and you're going to love this. I I want a MacBook equivalent in the Windows world. Can somebody make sure. me one? I would, well, I would pay, Samsung I would pay a way, lot Samsung, of money. Ironically, <laughs> comes pretty close. I know, they Samsung's come. making some, right? Um, but you're right, and, and I, you know, backed by data from NPD and from internal Microsoft uh, documentation, I wrote an article, I think last year, where I talked about how uh, PC makers destroyed the market for PCs by artificially creating a bigger than usual market by selling really cheap netbooks and conditioning consumers to expect those kinds of prices and not to pay re reasonable prices, meaning even just, you know, six to 800 bucks for a computer because they could get some piece of junk for three to four hundred dollars. And now that we have tablets that are also selling for that same price range and people are moving increasingly to those, as the market for PCs kind of naturally dries up anyway, it's exasperated by the fact that people don't want to spend. So even even when they do buy a PC, they want to buy these cheap things, not you know, some reasonable device. And and here's Intel leading this charge to the bottom. Like our future is cheap devices, you know, like great. It's like you're selling, you know, rip-off DVDs on a corner of a street in New York instead of, you know, the real thing. Like, I guess you, you could get the movie experience, but it's it's really not the same. <laughs> that guy wandering in front of the screen is really annoying after a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could you stop coughing, sir? <laughs> Try and get the cord back here. I'm trying to make a movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I I, I mean, um, you know, like Shmuley on Twitter is saying, what about Surface Pro? Isn't this the device you're talking about? Not really. I want I want a notebook mm -hmm. with an attached keyboard. Like a Surface Pro book would be great, right? Yeah. Something with like an great battery launch. life, Haswell chip. Yeah. Yep. Me too. Me too. I, I, buy, I love I the Surface that. Pro. It's just a little too small. And even when you move up to a like an 11 point something inch screen, it's yeah. a noticeable improvement. And why not like a 13-inch screen? Right. You know, like a real computer? I don't know. Just, yeah. a, just a thought. Yeah. I don't know. So I, I think it's discouraging to hear Intel talking up how great yeah. these new Netbook 2.0s are going to be. Let's have some premium machines, too. You know, one of and the reasons I, is because of the... I, somebody told me, I don't know if this, uh, the, what, this is relative as opposed to gross numbers, that the Chromebook is the fastest-growing segment out there right now, right? Now that means sub uh, fastest growing segment cheap. of sub three hundred dollars. Yeah. So Intel Dark, may say, but, "Hey, you know, yeah, 
You want me some of that Chromebook? I want Look some of that saying. good it's, Chromebook it's, action. This stuff is all just a race to the bottom. Here's Intel That's that makes sad. the most powerful chips yeah. on Earth. And all they're focused on, all they care about apparently, is Chromebooks, tablets, and what we would used to call netbooks. They don't Haven't call we netbooks. driven them to that, though? I mean, isn't that what the market's demanding? Ugh. I, you Ugh. know what? I know. This Ugh. Is, no, this is the Steve Jobs thing. People don't know what they want, Leo. So they want to spend less. What they want, you're not always doing the right thing. And and this is, I think they've harmed the market. I agree, uh, irrevocably. Yeah. Like I think this is, we have gone around a corner that we're never getting back from. Like Oy. it's just, uh, we ha uh, the device that I use every day is is that kind of MacBook Air style Samsung device that costs. It's expensive. It was twelve or thirteen hundred bucks. When I bought it a year ago, it doesn't have touch. You know, it's like a Windows Seven type machine. I love it. It is it is just a fantastic machine. But most people don't want to spend that kind of money on a Windows computer. Yeah. And it's because of the conditioning over the past. I was now several years. I mean, it yeah. was early Vista days when you know Vista wouldn't work on an Ultrabook. Yeah. I'm sorry, on a I, notebook. I, I, I people call the radio show all the time, and I say, I need a new computer. What's your budget? Two hundred fifty dollars, three hundred dollars, yeah, five hundred dollars maybe. Well, uh, you know, and I say, well, eBay, look, you know, I, I, you know, well, you can buy, it, but the problem is you can buy those computers. Of course you can. Uh, and they look no farther, and then I just I keep you know, saying to them, "You're not, you know, you get what you pay for. You're not going to be happy. Yeah. It's going to wear yeah. out. It's going to cause like more paradox, problems." like a though, because when you spend a reasonable amount of money on a computer, and by reasonable, I don't mean two thousand, three thousand dollars. I mean eight hundred dollars, whatever. Those things last for a really long time, and that's the other weird part right. of the PC market. The right. other that's reason that people aren't it's dying. Uh, and that's why Intel's going as many that computers way. Because that's because their computers yeah. last longer than they yeah. used to. Yeah. But that yeah. kind of explains Intel's point of view, right? Right. It does. Yeah, but I, 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 died, why couldn't one PC vendor like just say, okay, everybody else is raced to the bottom. And you know what? We're going to try and see if we can make money as a race to the top. And like even if we're the only <laughs> one who does it. And well, some people are doing it. You just don't hear about them because yeah. they're not doing so well. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, th I think. Leo, you're not I helping. Think, yeah, I think I would pay. I would pay. I would. That's pay what Alienware does, right? Yeah, I don't want a gaming laptop. I want something. I want something portable. Um, I want well, how, something. You know who's a good, a, a good probably person to ask is Lenovo because they have the full range, right? Yeah. They have. They're, they're that's, probably, a, uh, that's very fair. Lenovo certainly yeah. has uh, some very high quality computers. They have both. Do. They do both, yeah. and you can, you know, you can say a price, and there'll be something in that range. Yeah. That's but true. you know, That's I want something cool looking and not, I, I, I'm a ThinkPad user from way back, but I want something that I take it out of my, my laptop case and everybody wants it. I want that. <laughs> so you don't think the Carbon <laughs> X1 yeah. meets that criteria? Yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's close. Yeah. yeah. And how much is that one? Those are expensive. Yeah, uh, yeah they in are. In fact, I, I, you know, the touch version of that is probably as expensive as a MacBook Air. I mean, it's not a cheap yeah. computer, but there's a reason you know, why the MacBook case. Air costs what it costs. I think people think that Apple is uh, gouging. You know, they're 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 increasing their in their margins. And admittedly, they're high margin devices, but there's a right. reason why they cost that much. Uh, you, you're getting what you pay for. Yeah, it's funny. A lot of yeah. people on Twitter right now who are listening to the show are saying, like Chris Woodruff just said, you know, a lot of people who are in the market I'm talking about, the premium Windows market, they buy MacBook Pro and they put Windows on it. That's wow. Yeah, that yeah but, well, right okay, that's but a you can small talk to some number. Like, um, yeah, uh, and I wouldn't I recommend that because you're then dependent on Apple for your drivers. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm not and, saying and it's there, good. There, there, is, there are issues there. There's I no mean, touch. It's not, just, it's not well, right? But it's not just I can't learn the new keyboard. That's that stuff's fine, but. You know, Sandro discovered on his uh, MacBook Retina that that thing gets whatever the crazy amount of battery life when it runs on Mac, but it gets half the battery oh, life yeah. on Windows. And I yeah. mean literally half. No, and that's because, because you Windows have to have an do OS. It because Apple puts less than spectacular drivers. Ah, oh, that's interesting. They're boot camp stuff. And uh, you, you are beholden to them. And you also have to keep a, a Mac OS install in there because that's the only way you can do firmware updates. Right, and it, it gets into a whole. It, there's a it's whole subculture ideal. of people who do this stuff, but it really is not ideal. It's not ideal, and uh, I, and I did. I've done this, I, of course, myself as well. I did this for a time. I think uh, there are very high quality um, air compatible. I think my Acer S7 is in that yeah, that's ballpark. A good machine. And and now when you put a Haswell on it, and they've improved some of the yeah. things that were bad about it. Samsungs are good. They don't have the Lenovo Samsung. keyboards. Yeah, the Lenovo's are nice. Lenovo's uh, the one you want, right? The carbon. Yeah. Yeah, that could be it. 
What if it had a red lid? Yeah. Or something. Like just would, look what I did to so my was hair. It, I just so put so a purple it. cover on it. You can do that, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't have people. People they do want sell skin. Something. Lenovo sells yeah. these skin. Yeah. 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 Skin it. You know, it's a good idea anyway. Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, Put a skin on it. Says my laptop is better than your laptop, or my laptop beat up your. Laptop. <laughs> you know, I have uh, the Chromebook Pixel, only because Google gave it to me. I'd originally ordered it, and then I chick. I after I played with it, I thought I don't want this for fifteen hundred bucks. That's fifteen hundred dollars. I know. Fifteen hundred dollars, and I don't think Google's making a lot of money on it. I don't think that was their intent. Yeah. No. It's beautiful. It feels good. It's touch. It's Retina. It's. What's the air? What's the airplane experience like? Would you say you watched a lot of movies crossing the country? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, the, there's no airplane experience. Yeah, mm. it's just not ideal either. Yeah. That's that's the other thing. Uh, it's not worth fifteen hundred bucks, and I don't recommend it by any means. But I'm just pointing out if you want to make that nice hardware, yeah. it doesn't even have USB three. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. it's it's like a Surface RT or something in yeah. that regard. Yeah. You know, yeah. Stephen Sandoff says, "What if Nokia made a laptop, not a, not the rumored tablet, uh, but like they, that would be probably like pretty high book. end and pretty awesome, right?" <laughs> but don't you don't you sort of see? I mean, I, the fear with Nokia making a Windows device is that it will be RT because they know that yeah. platform better. You know, so if it, if it was the new Qualcomm chip, I'm, I don't have the hatred of RT that you have. So I, I would be. I think RT's hatred, dead. Hatred is a strong word. No, hatred RT's is... dead. No, <laughs> RT's dead. RT's no, dead. I disagree. Disagree. Who? Nobody's buying it. Nobody's buying it because right now the the chip is underpowered in yeah, the Surface RT. The current hardware is, great, is awful. Yeah. If you had a great no. art, uh, ARM no. chip in there, so, I would. You so are one. I, 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 I've been meaning to. I was thinking we should talk about this, and I forgot to put it in the notes because I wrote a an article this week that was a little bit critical of Surface RT, and it always brings out the Surface fans who can't stand that kind of stuff, but. <laughs> I, I have to say, in using Windows 8.1, I, I see that even me, who, who does like having a multiple windows open and all that kind of stuff, could move to like this metro environment. And that in such a case, Windows RT would be just fine. And that if, if all of the stuff that I used, if that was in metro, uh, RT would give me the battery life and all that kind of stuff. I, I, so as much as I can sit here today and tell people I don't think you should buy this thing now for the reasons you decided because of the hardware, um, I, do think, I do think that if they keep it, Keep it going, and they go to Tegra Four, and the the chipset improves, and the software improves on that side. Uh, this story could be very different a year from now. Um, the only problem is that, you know, what has it been nine months or something since they launched Surface RT? I mean, the sad reality is that the situation hasn't changed that much. I mean, obviously the apps have gotten better, but the underlying platform is just it's. You kind of install A1, and you think, oh, maybe this will make the difference, and it really it, it doesn't, right? It helps. I mean, it, it helps a little. It does. But yeah. someday, someday, <laughs> someday, and you know the reason I'm gonna tie I, a yellow I'm, ribbon around the tree. <laughs> I, I'm I'm an RT fan because I like I've said a million times on the show don't need a lot of desktop apps. I'm not like a lot of the listeners of the show are right. So I I run when I have my Surface RT. By which you I mean run, you are a woman and well yeah that's too <laughs> are a normal person. <laughs> okay yes. that too but. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. it, you remind me of Jeff Jarvis and his Pixel. He swears the Chromebook Pixel is all he needs. There are That's people awesome. who have <laughs> very simple <laughs> needs. You use Notepad. I do. Um, it's yeah. like the guy in the insane asylum who, who, who ensures you that he is, in fact, <laughs> President Grant. And that <laughs> you know. No, no, I'm, I take this seriously. I, writers are a very good example. Really, all a writer needs, you know, your writers. Yep. Is yep. a piece of paper, you know, uh, you know, and a pen. And a pen. That's and, what and, I and, my notes on. <laughs> but if you're a photographer, a videographer, yeah, if you right. make music, if you uh, program, I mean, there's lots of things people do with technology yeah. that doesn't work in these situations. Yes, so totally. The question is, are there a lot of you <laughs> out there? Yeah. Right. And I, I just, I, you know, it's going to be a race to see. Yeah. If they can get RT appeal to appeal to people before Microsoft finally gives up on it, yeah. And I think I, there is unfortunately this is a, a, a reality we all need to address here. There is unfortunately a lot of precedent for what Leo just described. Yeah. You know, and um, I I think that needs to factor into this as well. I mean, I I, I am. What is Microsoft's about stomach that. for this? Yeah. Yeah. It's about four years, so I don't know. We'll see. 
that's what it's been historically. I mean, I guess we'll see. And there's also a larger strategic question because, uh, you know, there are those who make the point that maybe RT is the future. I think you guys have even made this, the future of Windows. Yeah. That really, right, that's the, what I mean. The, the RT words, right. is the actual if, Windows if 9. If Microsoft's plans actually come to fruition, RT would be incredibly viable. Uh, you know, it, it, and that requires the hardware to evolve over a number of years. It requires that software platform and the supporting mm -hmm. ecosystem to evolve, obviously. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and I mean this. I mean this honestly, because the more I use 8.1, there are, there are instances in 8.1 where you do such things as uh, open a, uh, a photo attachment in an email using the mail app and it does that automatic split screen thing where the photo opens in the photo app and you've still got the email app over here and you, there's there's some instances like reading lists in Internet Explorer is another good uh, example of that although the split is different where I sort of look at that and I think this actually makes some sense this addresses that central issue I always had with the iPad as a productivity tool where you could only be looking at one thing at a time and there was no, and there still isn't, I don't believe, a, a way on a keyboard with an iPad to switch quickly between two things. And certainly there's no way to look at two things at the same time. That that kind of capability, as simple as it sounds, in many ways puts it over the top from a productivity standpoint, if that makes sense. It's a simple thing. It's just a little, it's not multiple windows everywhere on your screen, but it's, is it enough? I mean, honestly, in many circumstances, yeah. I think of students, and this is what came up for me with the, with the Chromebook, I think of students, I mean, the way I write or work is I have other windows open. And the bigger yeah. the screen and the more windows I can have, the better. And this seems to be moving in the other direction. I don't Maybe. Know. How, Although, how do you way, write? How do you write, I, Mary Jo? Noting. Don't you have uh, uh, other <laughs> notepad and then, or are you I just doing to... it all out of your head? No, I, I, I take notes on paper. Oh, you have a notebooks. reporter's notebook. There you I do. go. Yeah, yep. that's the way. Uh, then I write my article using my notes, and I write I a notepad. Then right. I cut and paste out a notepad into our CMS system. So full screen is it. not a problem for you at all? No. So let me, let me show you guys something. I don't know how easy this will be to, for you to see, but if you refresh the notes, I just pasted what my screen looks like. Even though I use the desktop, when we do this show, I have Skype snap to the left and I have uh, one note snap to the right and I am in effect <laughs> using this thing I just described already on the desktop like and a lot of times and I don't I don't I honestly do this exactly like this when I write but you could imagine a web browser open on one side and your word processing application or notepad or whatever using to write in on the other side I mean this and this will be better thing, I guess with a one where you could have an arbitrary size for those panes yeah because this pain right yeah. now is a little i or can't get your image not. unfortunately because i'm doing this on a mac yeah it's a, okay <laughs> it's just you can it's not hard to imagine it's a split screen thing yeah but, yeah you know uh, there's some intelligent automatic snapping in eight one that i think is really kind of cool so when you um you know use reading list to save articles for later it opens in a very thin pane on the side by default it's not something you have to do it does that automatically and then the other app, which is typically Internet Explorer, although it doesn't have to be, is on that bigger slice. And um, I don't know, maybe I'm just getting like sliding into dementia, but I, I find that kind of simplicity vaguely appealing. Like, I, I you know, I, I wish that I could, you know, use this kind of thing more often. And maybe mm -hmm. that's, the, you know, maybe that is the future. It's funny Dementia. because it's also the past. Because <laughs> yes. in the earliest yes. days of GUIs, there was a massive debate. I'm old enough to remember this between yeah. tiled windows and um, uh, overlapping windows. And even at Microsoft, there was this debate with Windows 1.0. Sure. And you know, there we, was a whole. This was contentious. And we and we decided, by the way, everybody overlapping. Yeah. A lot of people are going to really disagree with this because they, they live by all these multiple windows and multiple tabs and windows. and you know. But there's something to be said for the fact that we've maybe lost track of what it is we're doing. I mean, mm -hmm. um, maybe we've kind of, com you know, complexityed our way out of this. I mean, like we're, we're, we've got all this stuff going on. It's like, I mean, are we even paying attention anymore? Uh, it's kind of hard to say. Um, a lot of the know, argument you know, maybe for this, tiled maybe this was... this is a natural, a natural trend back to something that makes more sense. Well, at the, as I remember at the time, the reason people wanted tile is, had as much to do with uh, 
performance and processor speed. You had such limited constrained systems, it was very hard to do overlapping windows. And so it, it, <laughs> I it seemed to me, screen, Leo. Yeah, it seemed to me the I consensus want. was, hey, we would do overlapping if we could do it well, but we can't, so we're going to, tiled really is the way well, to go. there were performance issues, too. Yeah, remember, you that's would, what I'm saying. You would move something and it would redraw very right, slowly. Right, remember? But we've solved yeah. all that. Yeah. Why are we going back yeah. to tiled? <laughs> Why? We need to go back to sprites. <laughs> that's, a, that's what we need. I, uh, I, it's making me feel old, damn old, because I want, <laughs> I don't want thin clients. Technology is ultimately Chromebook is a thin client. I don't want a thin client. I don't. Right. I want. I want. Multi, I want overlapping windows. I feel like. I, by the way, I, I do want RT. I want RT that works. You know, like that's the yeah. thing. Like I think the reason I'm frustrated by RT is because I see it, and it's just not, it's just not quite there. You know. Yeah. Somebody asked me on the radio show, should I buy, uh, I want to buy a Windows RT tablet, should I? And I said, the only reason that RT, even at the new $300, $350 price point makes sense is you get a free copy of Office. Yeah. But don't think you can run any of your existing Windows apps on it, because you can't. By the way, I write stuff like that, and people say, I like it because it can't run those apps. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like, well, oh, yeah. Okay, it's, yeah. Ugh, yeah. Boy. And Shakespeare wrote sonnets because he just didn't want to. <laughs> he just liked iambic pentameter. I just, I'm not saying you have to run them, but I mean, I, yeah. you know, the options. No, I mean, I, I mean, and, and when I was deciding what to get, because I knew I was going to get a Surface, I went with the RT because of the battery life primarily, and it's double what the Pro is. So, right, you know, you again, not everybody life cares. Now, so. would it, that's, is that, I mean, is that the only reason? Um, it, no, it's thin, It's slightly thinner and lighter and the better battery life. Because, you know, for what I do... By the way, it, I would say significantly thinner. I, I noticed... Yeah, it feels thinner. much... It feels more distributed in weight, right, than, yep. than the Pro does. Um, the, the Pro is denser, and that's the problem. You pick it up, you're like, wow, this is heavy for what it is. Whereas the RT is like, yes, this is the right, this is the right yeah. weight yeah. for this thing. Yeah, so everybody, you know, everyone has the thing that is like their thing, right? For for a lot of people like me, I think battery life is is really a huge, huge thing. Yeah, and and I I love having choice. I'm not, you know, it's great that there you can get a hardware that suits you. Yeah. And I yeah. would never say, well, don't make anything Mary no. Joe would like. That's not <laughs> what I'm saying at all. I might say that, but yes. <laughs> you but might. there's also economics involved, and a company that yeah. is making something that you know only a you know ten thousand Mary Joes like. Yeah. Um, well, you know, you know what's worth pointing out here too is the other group of people who who will like this besides people like me are executives, in theory. Oh yeah, right? that's right. They want the dashboard, but they're buying iPads too, right? Right. So and and they don't care that they can't run Visual Studio, right? They they just want to have something they can check their email, you know, do some quick light editing on something, look at their PowerPoint. Yes, great. Um, and that is also a very big category. I mean, that's how iPads made inroads into exactly. banks. Oh, yeah. And, every, and it was oh, yeah. because the executives wanted those right. and they brought them in. Right. So if Microsoft could convince, you know, uh, more executives to take Surface RT tablets and start using them, I, it may kind of spur more app development, more improvements in the platform. I think, I think right now they just are kind of in such a version one state that they right. don't really know what to do with it. Right. Right. It's easy, you know, we, uh, humans have no sense of history or perspective. We just think that sure. this is the way it's, oh, it is now the way it always will be and always has been. And of yeah, course, this there's going to be some evolution here. That's a great point. I run into this all the time. It's like, uh, you know, I've always done things a certain way, so why can't I keep doing it this way? Uh, in fact, this well, is that's me. That's no, it. no, that's not you. This is the planet. Uh, we, we, <laughs> we get into this thing. We, we, we call it like tradition. Yeah. But we forget what the point of this thing was, and it, and how it, maybe it doesn't apply anymore. Yeah. Um, but we we you know, this is going to come up later. I, I my tip will involve this very topic. I like computers. <laughs> Seriously, I like eggs. I like <laughs> eggs. I want soup. But I I also like I like a command line. Um, but I like a command line in a multi-windowed environment. Yeah. I don't know. Yep. I still like multi windows too. Why? You don't even use them. <laughs> but I like having them there. Ah, yes. It's weird. It, it's like I like having things happen. It's it's like I like I don't just have two things snapped because I, I also want to have my Twitter feed open right. and I right. I want to have like right. a lot of things going well, you can't on. You can do that, that on an RT. You can do it on two RTs. 
Right. That's why I don't do that's heavy what, work on that's the That's the answer. <laughs> Buy more RTs. <laughs> Buy more RTs. Make a pyramid out of them. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I just want to point out, your reporter's notebook has extremely long battery life. It's it's pretty awesome. Yeah, but you know what? You know what though? What the movie service really blows. <laughs> it does. It's but it, it does work on an you airplane. You make like a little animation in the corner, and then you flip, <laughs> flip through it. Flip it. Flip book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Microsoft earnings are coming up uh, this afternoon too, right? Are we are. anything to look for? <laughs> uh, let's look for Windows sales. <laughs> will they? Will they know. say? Will they say though? They don't break it out. They don't say right. I mean, they just sometimes twenty million a month. So. Twenty million a month. It's not going to be twenty million a month. It's not. Yeah. No. Doubtful. Really? No. Actually, I'll tell you. So, by the, well, they said at uh, one of the recent shows, either Build or Tech It, or maybe even the Partner Conference. That actually it was probably the Partner Conference, and it was probably Tammy Reller who said, "We are going to we uh, that Windows Eight sales have continued at the same pace." They've made a general statement like that, and so if you look at the last. Announcement. I don't remember the exact number I came up with, but I believe it was somewhere in the 14.3 million per month range, something like that. And so if that's the case, I guess we could extrapolate the time out and figure out where they would be at. But uh, they did. They hinted that uh, the sales were um, were steady from the previous announcement. Yeah, but we're going to watch, obviously, because they're still reporting the same five business segments as they already have now, even though they just reorged. They're going to be mm -hmm. talking about Windows clients separately. So everyone's going to be looking at that number, obviously, yep. um, to yep. see. Oh, that's interesting. You mean, you mean next time because of the reorg, they won't? Uh, we don't know. know when when or how they're going to change the reporting structure. They haven't announced that yet. Mm, that's interesting. Yep. Yeah. Yep. A, a kind of a, a nice uh, side benefit. We no longer it have is. to tell you anything. <laughs> I know, right. You know. I mean, if they report according to the engineering groups, they would report Xbox, phone, and Windows together. That's a great idea. That You could hide well, a lot of things. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, what that means, though, is they might just say, I mean, obviously, they're always going to come up with these milestone numbers for certain products. Like, yeah. I'm sure they'll say at some point, you know, the Xbox One has sold 5 million units since whatever date, you know. But as a business unit or an engineering group or however they divide these things up, you know, that business that is responsible for Windows plus Windows Phone plus whatever else earned uh, whatever net income plus revenues. That's all they have to say about it. They don't have to. Yep. They don't have to divide it out between all the different mm -hmm. products necessarily. I mean, maybe they will, but yep. something tells me that they won't. I mean, yeah. I I think part of the point behind this was to push a couple of those little uh, low performers under the rug. Mm -hmm. You know. Right. Like they never report Windows Phone separately right now. They, they that's still, part yeah. of the Xbox division, right? So you we yep. never really know how they're doing with Windows Phone. Right. For, for that real, model's so. working. Why not apply it to the rest of the company? <laughs> yeah, you know? I know. Yep. <laughs> the engineering division is doing quite well, thank you. <laughs> well, by the way, online services, which has been losing money right. since... Right, we can hide that know, now, too. Since dinosaurs walked the earth. Yeah. Uh, is now going to make money because Office 365 is part of it. Look at so. that. Right. Yep. Yeah. There's there's ways to fix problems, Leo. You know, maybe this is the whole rationale for the reorg. <laughs> Do you think? <laughs> well, right. we don't. We, yeah. We. It's going to be interesting to see how they report. And if yeah. we don't even know if they're going to do reporting along those engineering lines, we we have absolutely no information. Like people are guessing it's going to be that way, but we don't know. Um. So yeah, let's see. Hmm. Very interesting. Yep. Yep, so 4 o'clock today, you'll see Microsoft earnings. It's also for the, their end of their whole fiscal year. It's not just um, one quarter. It's it's their Q, fiscal, uh, Q4 fiscal and fiscal 2013 earnings yep. are all being announced. And they always do it. Uh, they time this with their big annual sales conference, which is happening in Atlanta this week, called MGX. So they can announce this, and all the people can cheer. Yay, 15,000 cheering sales people. <laughs> the sales conference is where Steve Ballman really shines, right? That's the one he where he jumps around yeah. and he, he takes people's <laughs> phones and he smashes them and all that stuff. Yeah, this all is, that fun stuff. I hope we get video. They don't stream that, right? No. Oh, did, no. I ever tell you, did I ever tell you guys the story about how uh, myself and one other person walked into what at the time was the the, the Windows, like NT building or whatever? They had, they had just delivered... I guess it was NT5 Beta 2 or something. And I walked in on, I think it was Jim Alchin and Steve Ballmer was there and they were leading like a, an internal rah-rah session oh, because fun. they had delivered this milestone. Oh, and uh, I just walked through the door because I looked like I work at Microsoft. And back then, <laughs> the security wasn't as good. But um, it was no like kidding. a Nazi youth rally in there. They were literally 
chanting every NT everywhere, NT yeah. everywhere. And, and it was like, it was like rocking the building. You and have to do I, that with looked, salespeople. I looked at this guy I was with and I said, we got to get the hell out of here. Hell and so we run. headed for the door. And I swear to God, we're heading out the door and this guy says, you two stop. Oh. And we stopped and, and I turned around and he said, you forgot your t-shirts. <laughs> And so I said, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. And he gave us T-shirts. <laughs> so it was the craziest thing. And then we walked out, and I was like, we need to get as far away from here as possible. It feels like yeah. you should write a movie script around that. Yeah. That's great. It I insane. love it. It was that insane. The crazy. NT crashers. Yep. Yeah, no, you have this is a – I know this from working in radio stations. Uh, sales teams are of a, kind of a different breed. It's, first of all, it's the most horrible job in the world. It's grinding. People say no to you a lot. And so the only way to keep salespeople motivated is you've really got to cheer them up. <laughs> you got to rah rah and motivate them and get them excited. And uh, I understand that. And and that's what Bomber really is doing. People don't when they see Bomber, they don't get it. That's what a sales manager does. That's how you get people out there. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, at the partner show, the one who does that mostly is Kevin Turner, who's the COO. I mean, he he gets on stage, there's 15,000 partners, and he just revs them up by going, we're ahead of Oracle. Like, yeah. they, don't, they have yeah. all these data points. So right. we, who knows where the numbers come from, right? And everyone's usually like, yeah, cheering. This year was a little more subdued, but um, other years it's been pretty rah-rah at partner as well. Yeah, I mean, there's no, nobody's critically reviewing the numbers. No, no. That's not You're the not point. looking at the graph yeah. going, who's doing uh, this? I don't know why we're cheering, folks. I was just going over this Excel spreadsheet. And, Bye. Uh, <laughs> Here's your no. T-shirt. Go. <laughs> because really, the whole point is everybody. everybody's united in this desire to cheer up. It's going to be all right. There's this, you know, unif unity. Uh, salespeople are very simple. They want, they're optimists. They're natural optimists. And they, and they just want to be happy. Maybe everyone will get a Surface RT. Yeah. <laughs> that's, but you know, when everybody got a Pixel, a Chromebook Pixel at the Google I.O., that's when you knew they weren't selling. When they, now that they're gi they give away RTs, you're kind of thinking, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Although, you yep. know, they also are still selling them, even though they're only 100 bucks at things like uh, TechEd and all that. People are, people, people want lining them, up. they're buying Yep, they're well, buying them. I, there's a perceived people are, value. People love the the deal aspect yeah. of it. I mean, and by the way, ninety nine dollars for Surface RT is kind of hard. It's an amazing. Deal. I would buy it then. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I would yeah. buy one then. It is. Yep. I'm not sure three hundred fifty though. I would buy one, especially because it doesn't have a type cover. Now you got another hundred bucks for that. Right. Yep. Now you're four hundred fifty bucks. There's computers for that price. With yeah. Windows. Sure. All right. So to, to this afternoon, we'll watch for. Yep. Uh, uh, the Q4 results from Microsoft. And, uh, it, I mean, uh, it, it, there's not going to be any surprises, right? It's Oh, I don't know. You always wonder. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't think this has been a great year for Windows, Leo. I mean, I, I we'll see how that goes. but Interesting. I mean, there was I a the rumor question... this afternoon. Uh, there was a rumor going around this afternoon that they might announce that Windows 8 Point one had RTM. So they might announce that today, but I'm hearing no, no, still a few weeks away. You don't do that at your quarterly analyst call anyway. That's not. Unless you only do it if you're hiding away from stuff. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, by you know? the way, you're all getting free wristwatches. Well, it's exactly. like, yeah, Windows sales suck, but look, we have a new version of Windows. Right, and we just yeah. RTM'd it today. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you wouldn't expect them, for instance, uh, today on the phone call to say, oh, and by the way, that reorg, we're going to lay off a bunch of people now. Uh, no. No. <laughs> They'll save that. No. By the way, so I don't, this isn't, is this in our notes? The yeah, it thing? is. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, I. That was my clever segue. That was nice. Okay, so, so good at fooling Paul. I am Paul. actually kind of blown away that with this kind of a massive restructuring of the company, that layoffs aren't part of it. And I suspect that part of the reason is they need to sell it on employees, right? Right. Um, but. I, I think it's fair to say that Microsoft's a little top heavy, you know, actually maybe a little heavy on the bottom as well. I mean, across the board and that um, this is a company that maybe should be made leaner, you know, than it is. Maybe, maybe layoffs are appropriate for Microsoft. I, it has a very they, dense structure. Yeah. I mean, they have close to 100,000 employees right now and um, they are saying no layoffs were part of the reorg, but they're not saying it will never be part of the reorg. Right. Like they're saying right now there are no layoffs. So 
I, I haven't heard there are, I mean, I had one guy tip me and say he heard there were layoffs and they were telling people the day they announced the reorg, but I don't believe that's true. Haven't right. found that true. Um, any other final thoughts? I mean, uh, it's been a couple of weeks or at least a week and a half that you've had to uh, think about the reorg. Julie Larson Green, her role. Yeah. Promotion, demotion, side uh, motion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I had somebody talk to me about this recently because, you know, there were a lot of people up in arms about, is she a gamer? Is she not a gamer? She's heading up the Xbox now. You know, she ha <laughs> how could they do that, right? And, um, yeah. You know, I had a guy make an interesting point. Um, he said, you know what, they really, they put her in the right role because if you think about her pedigree, she is a design person. Like that is kind of what she's known for. She redesigned the ribbon. She was very instrumental in the design on Windows 8. And so when you talk about hardware, design of hardware is a huge thing. So it kind of makes sense that she is in charge of designing the Surface, being in charge of designing maybe future Connect. Uh, more Xbox uh, kind of peripherals. Uh, also, the phones, That's like having a big hand in that hardware part, right? Um, so if you think about it that way, you could say, yeah, they put her in the correct place. Um, they needed somebody who's very attuned to design because that's what hardware is about. Is she going to start talking with an English accent? <laughs> this is Sir Julie Larson Green. <laughs> hardware <I hope> so. <laughs> needs to look like it feels and feel. <laughs> Like it looks. Um, did you say? Does this say Dave Cutler's back? Yeah. What? So this is this is another weird thing, what? right? So do they? Ha Dave, I don't know. What? Dave Cutler, right? We knew he was in the Xbox group for the past year, or two two years. He I was believe. the architect of NT, right? Right. Yep. And he then our helped was was the key guy or one of the two key guys in in building the operating system for the Xbox One. So now, because of this reorg, he's actually back in Windows in a way, right? Because it's Windows, Windows Phone, and Xbox One all together in one division. So Cutler's back in Windows again. It's kind of like having Grandpa work on Windows. I don't know. Okay. It's really, he's, I saw. I he, fully expect him to be open to the press, and we should all be talking to him soon. Good. Yeah. I love we'll Dave Cutler. He's like, he's like uh, a legend. He is a legend. Paul and, and I love the book uh, Showstopper. Me too. So my, it's Joe. my favorite book. Yeah. Yep. Uh, G. Pascal Zachary. Mary Jo has a signed copy. Really? Of Showstoppers. Signed, signed by, by Cutler? Dave Cutler. Yes. Wow. Yeah. By the way, every, anybody who hasn't read this, the story of the making of NT is really yeah, good. This is the stuff. It's like the soul of the new machine. It's one of those great behind the scenes, you know, embedded reporter story. And it's so good. Yeah. Zach, yeah. Zachary did a great job. He did yeah. a really great job. Um, and, you know, if you want to understand what made Microsoft tick and how, how Windows was built, that is your book. But that I mean, is it, ancient history. It's ancient history. And, you it know, Cutler... It is literally 20 years old this year. It is. Yep. And, yep. you know, Cutler, Cutler has supposedly... This is like urban legend at Microsoft. Cutler has in his contract. He never has to talk to the press. Oh. Huh. Ever. It's in and his contract. He, yeah. Because he doesn't like talking to the press. No. He's an and, engineer. And in fact, what, yeah, he, when I when I got my signed book, in fact, he he had somebody else bring it to me because he didn't want to talk to me directly. Um, so that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a funny guy. Does but, he mistrust you know, he can do the press or what? I well, originally, so the story goes um, that he he is so outspoken and outlandish in things he says that oh. that. The PR team didn't want him talking to Dave, the press. Dave, you won't be talking anymore. <laughs> By the way, because um, he must have July, given July twenty seventh the, the access to this. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, the July twenty seventh next week or nine okay. days from now, whatever that is, uh, is the anniversary of the twenty the twentieth anniversary of the initial release of Windows NT. Wow. Oh wow! Is it really? Ago, Same year yep. as uh, Jurassic Park. <laughs> <It's> kind <laughs> of fitting. By the way. Um, <laughs> You know, people who follow Windows today know that we're uh, that you know we're in the like um, nine thousands for build numbers. Like yeah, uh, right. the Windows eight point one Pro Preview is build ninety four thirty one, and so the initial build of Windows NT, which was actually version three point one, I just lost the page, is five twenty eight. <laughs> so there have been like nine thousand builds <laughs> of wow. this code base. Since the initial release. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. How much 9, of the original code do you think is still in it? 
Actually, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of it was still in there. I know. I think so, too. Like Min Win, you know, the the uh, kind of fixed kernel where they took a lot of the dependencies out. It's still the NT kernel in, in, in the center, I believe. Like, that's still the I mean, it's, it's a wee creamy, it's creamy core. My thought exactly. exactly. <laughs> that, that some people like, like to eat the outside first and go for the center, but, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Did, did Cutler ever leave? I don't know did a lot he about stay there? Has he just stayed thing. there 20 years solid? He has. There he never all left. There kinds yeah. of rumors um, over the years about he left the building, he quit, um, that they had to beg him to come back. But he never actually, I believe, never actually left the payroll, as far as I know. I'm going to reread Showstopper. I know. I want to reread it, now, too, now that we're Now I want to hear it. it again. I wonder if it's yeah. on Audible. I'm just going to check. They should have Dave Cutler reading Showstopper. What does oh he God. sound like? He seems like he'd sound gruff. I bet he barks. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a Marine. You know, he looks tough. Totally oh, yeah. Like no, he's tough. Yeah. Everybody talks about how hard he is, and um, they're like, "Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't suffer fools." <laughs> yeah. Well, he must be a smart guy. He's obviously wealthy at this point and does not need to work, and yet continues to uh, to do it. Yep. And he probably still engages in very dangerous hobbies. What did he do? He has that kind of, you know, Wait. like race car driving, and motorcycles, and, uh, and yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's another fun fact. A lot of the um, NT team back in the day, the original team, they were all into race car driving, and they had their own team, right? Um, I forget what the name of the team was. Somebody in the chat room might remember that. But, uh, yeah, they were really into that, and it was a big hobby on the team. You know what's sad? This book is not on Audible. It is not on Kindle, and it is not in print. I know. It's out of print, yep. Holy moly. I have a copy somewhere. i got to find it. Uh, that's sad. It, uh, that'd be a great book for Audible. That would. I can't believe it's not on Audible. Um, I can't believe it's not Kindle. So you have to buy a used copy if you don't have a copy. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how I got it. I I got it when it came out. And, you know, we've had uh, uh, G. Pascal Zachary. He's been on Twitter. And he's mm -hmm. a great guy. He's a local local guy. Uh, I don't know what he's doing these days. Um, I just saw his byline the other day doing something completely unrelated to oh, tech. interesting. That's what yeah, happens. Maybe. Is That's he like a happens. business writer? You burn out. It's like he I might be an education anymore. writer yeah. or something like oh. that. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. They're saying it's on Kindle, but Amazon doesn't say it's on Kindle. Maybe there's another version. Um, that sounds, you know, that's interesting. So, are you sure it's not on, well, on Kindle? Well, you know, I'm on the Amazon page and it says, if you would like the publisher to put this on Kindle, but then. Yeah, it's always a bad sign. It looks like, well, yeah. but now it looks like there is a Kindle edition. It's just maybe from a different publisher. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, you know, maybe it's the paperback. Yeah, it's, so I was looking at the hardcover. Right. And in fact, the hardcover, the paperback is. Uh, okay. Is still, a, is it available? Is it in print? I guess the paperback's in print. Yeah. Okay. So it's the hardcover that's not in print. So good news. You can get Showstopper. Yeah, that's good. In paperback. I was looking at the hardcover. There's the problem. Or on Kindle. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get Shoot. it right now because I don't know where my copy is. You've got a signed copy. I do. I know that was really awesome, and uh, he inscribed it with a very interesting inscription. I'm looking. I took a picture of the inscription. That I'm looking for it now on my sky drive. Who knows? My sky drive is a mess. But <laughs> see, Kip's and you shall find. Yeah, actually, it, tell, it tells me I already own this book on Kindle, so I guess right. <laughs> I got it. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. that makes sense. Well, yeah, he said something like, uh, "As you would know, being in the press, don't always read. Don't always believe everything you read." Oh, wow. So he, he's, 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 he's a cynic. Any yeah. qualifier. Yeah. So you would know. Uh, as yeah, a no, press because person. he he uh, is portrayed in showstoppers not favorably in the least. <laughs> well, and by the way, in that inscription, I'm sure put puts that over the top. <laughs> it's interesting. A, a interesting. much nicer guy than yeah. as described. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Do not believe that I am the Jake portrayed yeah. in these covers, but I'll still sign <laughs> the book. Yeah. How funny. It's a great book. Oh, no, it's a must-read. It's an amazing It's story. one of, like, a dozen books that if you uh, follow technology, you just have to read. In fact, um, if I'm not mistaken, and God help me for bringing up the NSA in this talk, but I believe, <laughs> I, I believe, I could be wrong, someone could tell me, I believe that the operating system that he was working on a digital that they re did not end up making, and that led to the development of MT, I believe it was called PRISM. Ah! Oh, was it really? I, I mean, because he also was. was, he was the uh, guy who wrote VMS at Digital, too. VMS. That, that yeah, was but he was the, doing yeah. the, the, the follow-up, and I believe, oh, wow. 
Again, I could be wrong. I That's wild. Story. So the guy who wrote VMS is still at Microsoft. Yep. And he's working yeah, on so Prism Windows. was the name of the project to develop wow. digital's risk machine. Oh, risk. And the yeah. software was called Mica. Wow. Uh, yep. Yep. Look at me right. with a memory. Whoa. <laughs> Look You're, at you and your you memory. You binged it. I know you binged that. You didn't remember that. Mary Joe, what? nobody bings nothing. <laughs> Biggity no, Bong I, is the only guy I, who bings. I did look it up after I said it. I'm kidding you. I just wanted to say bing it again. <laughs> and I use Google, if that matters to anybody. But, yeah, the operating system was codenamed Micah. That's cool. And he must have been the father of that as well, correct? Yeah, that's what, right. He was the architect of both yeah. of those things. Wow. Yep. This, yeah, this, they this shut guy down is legendary. Wow. He is legendary. And... He's he's not just phoning it in, guys. Like he he really did help write the Xbox One operating system with Don Box and David Treadwell, like a whole bunch of guys yeah. at Microsoft Actually, who've been there forever. So, by the way, just since we're talking about Cutler, we should also mention that he has forever changed the course of personal computing because it was him who decided that Microsoft would back what we now call X64, which was an AMD architecture best based on X86 that took it to 64 bits. <clears throat> it is, in other words, the architecture behind every single computer sold today. At the time, Intel and Microsoft generally were pushing Itanium for 64-bit computing. That's right. And he, he looked at this stuff and he said, no. He said, this he other smart. stuff is garbage. You gotta use, we're going to use this AMD mm -hmm. thing. He was so And he pushed smart. that through. And Intel had to adopt it. It was because of this. You know, Intel wow. had to adopt X X64. Every single That's process right. that they sell right now is They were lucky of, they had that Israeli... Uh, kind of yeah. a skunk works project uh Very and, then, and itanium was a flop <coughs> and these guys were working on uh pentium i think and uh core i'm sorry they're working on the core chips mm -hmm. um <clears throat> there you go cutler back so yeah, let's talk about uh we're going to take a break in a second and uh but before we do um a report from the trenches office 365 versus Google Apps. <laughs> Tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, I'll talk about this one quickly. Um, Not it too was quickly. I have to go to the bathroom, so take your oh, time. Oh, okay. You, <laughs> you're going to like this I'll one. I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be listening on the way. Okay. <laughs> so uh, at, at Microsoft's partner conference in Houston last week, you know, every, all the sessions were open to everybody for the most part. I mean, anybody could go in. You didn't have to. Even, even I was allowed to go in as, as press. Like, I didn't have to. <laughs> Right. check in with anybody or whatever. But I found out this week because uh, there was accidentally a session posted to the partner site that there were secret sessions at the partner show too. And one of these secret sessions was about how how to compete with Google apps uh, with Office 365. So this is for Microsoft partners who are out there trying to sell um, against Google. And it was very, it was really interesting to watch the session. I don't know if they ended up pulling this this uh, presentation down or not, but same thing. Do, you, do you have a link to it in here? Let me see. Yeah, I did link to it in my story um, uh, that I wrote this that. week about it. Um, so they, they were talking a lot about, you know, what, what can we do to help you guys sell? And they were telling, they, they said a lot of interesting things like, um, you know, if you guys lose to uh, um, anybody on a Google account, how hard it is to do the win backs. And they gave them strategies to try to do win backs. And one comment during the presentation for Microsoft was, and you know, sometimes, if we really need to win it, we'll just we're, we just uh, have to buy out the contract, which basically says we're we're giving it to them for free, uh, just so we can say we wow. won the deal. That, that's pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I I don't write up a lot of case study wins because I'm always nervous about like how did they win yeah. this? Like yeah. what yeah. what was the criteria, right? Yeah. And we can never really find out because the customer is not really allowed to say a lot of times how how our, a deal was won or lost or whatever. Uh, but at the end, they opened it up to partners and said, okay, guys, what, what do you need from us? And one guy gets up in the session and just says, your SKU system, you know, which is all the different versions of Office yes. 365 you have, is a mess. Yes. And I cannot sell this thing because Google goes in and says, you have two options, this right. one or this one. Right. And I go in there and I've got like, you can get plan P with this thing and that and that. And then this costs yeah. this much. But if you add this, it costs yep. that much. Yep. And, uh, the you know all the other partners are like yeah that's a problem uh, you guys got to fix this and you know their their public message is we are giving you guys flexibility it's great to have a lot of choice so you can sell the right plan to people but in the end simplicity is what wins the sale right so 
Uh, it was just a very, very interesting, real session, not the rah-rah stuff, just, you know, how hard it is in, in the war in the trenches between Google Apps and Office 365. It gets, it gets pretty nasty out there. So uh, two things. One, that video has been taken down, as expected. Oh, surprising. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, and and the thing that struck me because I looked at it and I I was, I was checking this out earlier in the week, um, yeah. you know, they basically admitted what I've been saying all along, which is you know I I do feel that Office three sixty five is superior to Google Apps, and I feel that for those oh, yeah. companies that are going to be paying for one of these services that Office three sixty five in general beats out uh, Google Apps, but there is this kind of notion of free, even though Google Apps itself is not actually free anymore, in that you know any small business can use custom domains and, and sign up for Gmail and you can kind of you can kind of do this free thing through the Google ecosystem which doesn't really exist on the Microsoft side yeah. um, at least not in Office 365 and uh, you know they kind of said you know it's it, it is hard you know a lot of times we hear from these especially from small businesses where they're like you know your your offerings are kind of expensive I mean they're you know, comparatively speaking. And and I think that's a problem too. I, that combined with the, the sheer complexity of the offerings. Because even, you know, I did an Office 365 presentation a week or so ago and in researching the SKUs, because it's hard to remember how many there are and what they are, you know, yeah. what the differences are. Um, I, I basically came, at some point I finally realized, like, I can't cover all of these. There's too many of them. Like, it's, I have to kind of just generalize this. There, there yeah. It is crazy how much choice there is there. Yeah. Yeah, there's pluses and minuses to that, right? Like when when you go into yeah. a new account, you, I mean, and they talked about this too. They're like, we have to beat them going into an account. If they go in first and then we follow them and try to unseat them, it's tough. But if we go in first, we, we have a better chance of winning because we can talk about value instead of price. Um, yeah. And they talked about those kind there, of strategies. So, yeah, there's yeah. something on the Microsoft side where they can go into a business and say, look, you know, you have, you know, it's X number of employees and, and some of them can get by with just web-based access to email you know, documents and whatever. And those people can get by really cheaply. Some people need full office. Some people might need project or Visio or some of the advanced things. And there are different pricing structures for each of those things. And we offer those as a choice. And so it's kind of a strange deal where it's an advantage for Google to be able to say, we have two things. Yeah. But it's also an advantage for Microsoft to be able to say, we can better meet your needs if, if your needs are complex. Um, and it's not it's not that one or the other is the better approach. It's that both approaches have their advantages. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, take the teeny wee. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, earnings just came out. Uh oh. How dare they? Oh, we How dare the they? You know, we, we came so close to getting out of the show before the earnings call. Dang it. I know. Dang All right. it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, let's take a break. We'll get the earnings. I'll, to give you, mostly to give you guys a chance to uh, look at the yeah, uh, report. Uh, and uh, when we come back. Could you tell me where you're seeing that? <laughs> Microsoft.com slash MSFT. But first, a word from Shutterstock. Shutterstock.com is the place to go if you need images, gorgeous vector graphics, video clips, illustrations, stock photos. Um, I have a, a Shutterstock subscription because, I, you know, for a couple of reasons. One is I for my blog, you know this. When you do a blog post, you absolutely have to put an image with it. I don't know why, but it just it, it makes the post look better. It sings. And I don't have Paul Thorat's Photoshop skills, so I've got to get <laughs> I gotta get something that really works. And so uh, Shutterstock, for me, this is great. I have a subscription. You can also buy uh, images and packages and so forth. But before you even do that, just go to Shutterstock.com and create an account. You don't even need to give them a credit card. You can just uh, create the account uh, and, and start browsing around. Uh, you can look by categories, so uh, you know they have all sorts of categories from abstract art to vintage art. Uh, you can narrow it down, which is awfully cool. By uh, they have a spectrum tool by color and so forth. But you can also search uh, by keywords. Um, let's say happy executive. So um, this should I should be able to find one of those or two. Happy. So I'm searching for executives, but in, you can qualify it with. Emotions, colors, it's really a neat search tool. Hey, there's a happy executive. <laughs> she's she's just jolly. Jolly, jolly. Oh, but here's not a happy executive. That's a mad executive. Here's a, why is it all the women are happy and all the men are, well, he's happy. Odd, but happy. <laughs> oh, there you go. There's Steve Ballmer right there. Happy ex.
He's a happy executive. So uh, play around with it. When you sign up for a free account, you can create a light box, which allows you to save images uh, and share them with others and so forth. The light box is handy because uh, uh, you could get, you know, if, if you're, say, designing a page or a graphic or a menu or something, you can pull images up, throw them in the light box. But it's also a good way to save inspirational images, inspir images that you go, wow, this is great. Or... Uh, Oh, here's some, here's, by the way, 1.4 million videos, royalty free, 26 million photos. And, and every week they add, every day they add uh, 10,000 new images. And the quality on these is spectacular. That's because they vet each image. Many contributors, professional photographers and artists, they look at each image individually for content and quality before adding it. You can choose individual image packs or get a monthly subscription for the best deal. I have the 25 images a day subscription, which is great. And even greater because now I can get you 30% off. When you use our offer code Windows 7, Windows 7, not at, named after the operating system, but in fact after the month of July, the seventh month, uh, you can get 30% off on your new account. That's a great deal. Windows 7, Shutterstock.com. We thank them for their support of Windows Weekly, Mary Jo Foley, Paul Therott, they've had time to digest their lovely luncheon of Microsoft numbers. And now we'll uh, report. You want to erp up? Uh, let's, um, how are we going to do this? Well, um, you could do a dramatic reading, but I think just tell <laughs> us. Be... Well, the biggest thing that stands out to both of us is uh, regarding Surface RT, I would think. There's numbers on RT? No. Sort of. Um, <laughs> Sort of, yeah. <laughs> Some numbers, yeah. What? Go ahead, Paul. You've already tweeted it out. <laughs> uh, Microsoft has reported an almost $1 billion charge related to Surface RT inventory adjustments. $900 million. Meaning they made too many and couldn't sell them, and now they're going to... They're bulldozing them into a pit. Pay for it. Yep. No, they're well, giving them away, right? <laughs> All these that's a big charge. A billion that's, dollars? Yeah. Yep. How many did yeah, they make? Did they say? That's yeah. what we don't know. Yeah. I saw so many crazy rumors about how many they made. And you know... Mary Jo, gonna, you should have bought more. I should have bought more than one. 500 bucks a whack. It's no. <laughs> about 1.8 million of them. Holy... Yeah. Is it? I just... It I'm curious how they... How they really went wrong in their channel figuring on on the surface rt I'm, I'm curious because they always talk about you know their visibility into the pipeline and channel inventory yep. and they have a good sense of where demand's going to come from so this is really this was a like, new product that it, they it, it were was true. seemingly excited about for some reason but I, I i think it suffered from bad word of mouth i i, yeah. I this is like a movie that opens poorly that um people just you know i think it's bad word of mouth yeah, and I, 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 had, I, I'd have to, I could never find this now, but I had written this thing uh, some months ago where I sort of described, like, you know, how differently could things have been if mm -hmm. they had launched Surface Pro that day right. instead of Surface RT, and given the world a Windows tablet that was compatible with everything that they already had, you know, that maybe that would have made a difference, mm -hmm. um, and then given people a chance to get into kind of the more pure Metro experience a little further down the line. Um, I mean, in some way, I'm just surprised it's so explicit because we knew they were dumping these things, right? From yeah. TechEd to Build to WPC to, you know, probably to MGX. I mean, they're, they're giving these things away, essentially. And, um, you know, no one was blind to that. I'm just kind of surprised they're so explicit. That, like, it's like we're washing our hands of this thing. I mean, they're doing this right up front. It almost completely obviates, in fact, I'm sorry, sorry more than completely obviates, the related and uh, unrelated, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, $782 million of previously deferred revenue related to the office upgrade offer. And so Surface RT has completely wiped out all of the benefits to office pre-sales. You know, that's how big that is. Wow. But, that's it. Um, right. Windows, <sighs> Windows numbers aren't as bad as some they're, they're not that horrible. <laughs> Yeah. So they're breaking down uh, these numbers. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are the Windows numbers? Oh, where are the Windows numbers here? Well, right, so I haven't actually seen the, right, you mean like the revenue. The breakout. So I'm looking for the yep. breakout. I can't find it. All right. Oh. Yeah. So, Maybe. but I, well, we can, well, we can say this though. Um, let's see, how do we say it? 
Uh, Windows Division revenue was up 6% for the fourth quarter, meaning year over year, and 5% for the full year. So that's actually pretty amazing. Um, that includes Windows upgrade offer revenue deferrals, meaning um, pre-sales of Windows 8, right? Uh, if you exclude that, I believe, if I'm reading this correctly, then their revenues in the Windows division uh, decreased 6% in the fourth quarter, year over year, which again, is actually isn't horrible, and 1% for the full year. So uh, if you look at like, say, uh, I guess it would be July 2012 through June 2013, which is like the launch year for Windows 8, revenues declined 1%. <clears throat> and, and frankly, given the conditions in the PC market, um, I actually think that's great. Um, you know, given uh, as poorly as we see the launch of Windows 8, and as poorly as as is absolutely a fact, the PC market is doing, their revenues in this year have only gone down one percent. That's that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that is pretty good. I think. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, back to the Surface RT. It sounds like that. Um, that inventory charge is due to the pricing change announced this week. So that was the $150 off every oh, Surface RT. Interesting. Uh, so that includes finished goods, parts, accessories, um, all that. Hmm. So that's what they're attributing that right down to. Hmm. Yeah, Windows revenues uh, in the month were $5.7 billion, uh, meaning it's still the second biggest business in Microsoft. 6.3 for business, which is the office uh, Division. Office is bigger than Windows. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it has been for yep. a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, server and tools came in at just about $5 billion even, so a little smaller than Windows. Um, yep. So they take they, a billion-dollar charge on a $350 RT sale. Does that mean they're selling below cost? It does. Well, I, I, yeah, now they are. Because they didn't course, book the because, profit for those until they're sold. Right. So right. that means they they're have, selling considerably below cost or expect to yeah, sell. So in other words, this suggests that they paid, that they were selling them for what they paid for, essentially, I would imagine, yeah. or a bit more. Yeah. So you try take a charge of $150 per unit sold. Yep. And, and they, that means the they still expect to sell a, a lot of units. I guess it's better right. selling them at 350 than putting them in a yep. landfill. Yep. But they might yeah, even they have they to go lower. Well, online services lost... Less. How, okay, so it was what, 270 million last quarter? <laughs> it was 480 uh, million a year ago. Okay. Uh, 262 this year. Hey. hey it's looking good. Better. Only so uh, a little using, more than a quarter Nokia of a billion math, dollars. They're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> they're doing great. You're doing awesome. Yeah, that's better. And, you know, like we said, that that is going to change once they figure out their reporting structure because we won't see, we probably right. won't see online services. We're not going to see this broken. I mean, out, honestly, yeah. uh, across their five divisions, uh, income and revenues are up in every single one of them. And in the cases where we're talking about losses uh, from a profit perspective, the losses are less. Uh, and that's online services, actually. So, uh, a year ago, entertainment and devices actually posted a small loss. This year, they posted a small gain. I mean, honestly, roughly speaking, they're year over year. This is they're uh, making money. Oh, they're making a lot. When of you money. make fifty billion dollars, saying, uh, "Hey, we're going to take a billion dollar write off," doesn't isn't that bad? Well, oh, by the way, so a year ago in that quarter, Microsoft made revenues of seventeen point four billion dollars. In this previous quarter, they made twenty point. Five billion. Wow! So they, that that's a significant. That's revenue, not not it, not profit. Revenue. Yeah. Profits uh, seven point six billion, up from six point three billion a year ago. That sounds like a pretty good growth year over year. Uh, yep. That sounds yeah. okay. I would say so. Just think how well it would have done if RT had been a hit. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Did, yeah. Wasn't it, the the word billion dollar charge reminds me of uh, Xbox? Didn't they take a billion dollars? <laughs> yes. Yeah. One point. Ooh, I one by one. I yeah, for that. the red ring problem. Mm -hmm. And then what and was nobody, the what was the write off for that. overture that they took? It was, it was a billion dollars. They like taking yeah. billion dollar write offs. What was the write off for overture? Oh, I think it was. It was a billion dollars. <laughs> you got you just want to get that stuff out of the way. <laughs> so you got billion dollar businesses and you got billion dollar losses. It, uh, but That's there was right. more. As long as there's more billion dollar businesses than billion dollar losses. Mm hmm. Not bad. 
They're probably going to get whacked, though, because, oh. you know, analysts uh, didn't know about this Surface RT thing. Right? Not at all. <laughs> no, that, that's a, I, can, I cannot believe that's they a left field. stated yeah. that so explicitly. I, I'm I really think they had shocked. to. This is a problem of being publicly held. I, I'm, well, you know what, though? In the past, I feel like they would have massaged that in over quarters. You know, that they would have... Yeah, they didn't do it with Overture either, right? Remember, they just pulled the Band-Aid right off. I know, but... Uh, so was this like a recent thing that they're just being more transparent or something? I, I don't know. No, this is not the way they they. There's no doubt that there was financial massaging going on at this company for many many years. Like I, it's it's like that has stopped. God, I miss those days. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you're watching Windows Wiki. Paul Thorat, Mary Jo Foley. We thought we'd have time to take questions from the audience, but of course okay. the quarterly results have taken all of that time. But that's okay because uh, it's nice that we could do that. Uh, now I'm all messed up, Leo. I don't want to talk about anything else. Now I want to write about their earnings. Okay, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> we have to do our picks. We can't go without a beer pick, especially this one. No. But uh, first, let's start with our tip of the week. Just do it quickly, Paul, and then you can go blog. <sighs> or, all right, so, or, or as Aaron uh, Sorkin would said, you could put your jammies on, <laughs> yeah. go to the basement, and write a blog. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Are you enjoying that the newsroom is God, back? It's god awful. God, I couldn't finish it. I couldn't even watch it's, one episode. And again, I don't think it's preachy enough, Leo. Yeah, the most preachy show ever. And then every, you know it's like he has to get the the line about bloggers in their jammies in every single show. I want to live in a world where everyone is that smart and dedicated. Oh, I want it to be like that. You know what I mean? It's not, and I it that's what drives me crazy. Anybody. I don't believe that. Anyway, let's not get off of the side trip. Yeah, because okay. you're never going to get so, your blog, and you got your jammies are waiting. Gotta get, I got to get my jammies. Hurry up. My blog. So I'll, I'll rant about the news from later. Um, <laughs> so uh, I wrote about system recovery this week in Windows 8, and uh, because a lot of people have noticed that the system image backup tool from previous versions of Windows is gone all of a sudden in Windows 8.1. Now, I. I actually believe it's going to make a comeback in the sense that I think they'll make it available as a download or at least put it on the disk or whatever because the reason it was in Windows 8 is because people who upgraded from Windows 7 would need that tool to access the information that was in the backups. That situation still exists today, so I, I'm a little surprised. It's not in the preview, but I suspect it will make a comeback. Um, but I did use this opportunity to write about sort of the new... They're not new to A1, but the well, they're, they're, some of them were improved in A1, but the new style system recovery tools that first debuted in Windows 8 and in some cases have been, uh, you know, revved for 8.1. Um, a lot of this is the old school people who uh, like the old way of doing things and you know are suspicious of the new new way of doing things. But you know, I think that the the recovery tools in Windows 8 are comparable and or better to the recovery tools that you would see in such things as like Android or the iPad or whatever. And that and that that's the point that. Um, it's not this giant monolithic backup where you have to be connected to an external hard drive or a NAS or something and pumping bits across the wire every single night to make sure you have the latest version of your system image or whatever, which is the way some people like to do things. And so there's a new way of doing things in Windows 8. Uh, 8.1, again, has some improvements. But um, I, I think this is one of those things where people, you know, some people are always going to want to do it the old way. I get that. Um, but uh, they're also not very patient with those of us who are, are happy enough to move on, you know. And so in, in Windows 8, we have things like PC Reset and PC Refresh. And I use these tools very recently. Actually, I blew away virtually everything I have here. And I'm still amazed by how quick it is that you can go back to a fact refresh uh, Windows 8 system. And then with the way the world's going, you know, there aren't a lot of heavy Windows applications that I'm installing off of disk anymore. Um, a lot of the things that I use, I install online. It's not a big deal. I synchronize all my data through SkyDrive or SkyDrive Pro. I mean, I, I just don't, I, I really think that in this new way of doing things that Windows 8 is the first step to um, system image backup in many ways just doesn't have a place going forward. But anyway, that's the discussion. So you can you can look at that on my, on my blog. God, I just love system image backup. Fortunately, there are plenty of third-party solutions. It's not. That's what people are talking about. You know, RxSoft has got this, and these guys have got that. I never and, used yep. to, you know, well, I never used the Microsoft solution. Yep, all right, I'm sure. It was nice you know, it was in there. Like, and people will do things like they have Home Server or Windows Server Essentials, and uh, these things, by virtue of the fact that you're connected to your home network or your work network, will sit there and do these backups over the wire, and they, it all happens automatically. And I have many success stories from people who have, recovered systems this way and it works you know but that's like a traditional pc scenario right I mean, these devices that we're talking about 
aren't necessarily going to be ever sitting on a wire connected to anything and or you're not going to plug in a hard drive and do a backup it's not the, the way things work we we do these sync uh, scenarios over the internet uh, to cloud services it's a different it's a different world I mean, and you wouldn't expect an iPad to have the same heavy system image tools that your no. PC does and I don't think we should expect these devices to yeah. either and I think that's I know that that's where we're heading. That's the in. beauty of them. They don't need them. Yeah. So, But it's a break from the past, and this is that yeah. tradition thing yeah. I was talking about. Yeah. You know, people sometimes forget with the why of what they're doing, and they, all they can think is it's not the same, and I think it freaks some people out. Okay. okay. Uh, and Moving then software on. Pick, I'm sorry? Moving on. What happened? Moving on. Oh, sorry. Enough Enough uh, of this. I thought I heard you say, I thought you said Lumia. I got excited there for that. <laughs> uh, Lumia. Uh, I just have to say, Lumia, and Paul goes, what? After approximately 17 straight weeks of having Windows phone picks, um, my software pick this week is actually for iOS. Um, Microsoft surprised me, and I think many other people, by re releasing the curiously named OWA in separate versions for iPad and for iPhone. And the iPhone version works on um, iPod Touch as well. So OWA in Microsoft parlance, uh, stands for Outlook Web Access or Outlook Web App in more recent uh, days. What it is, is the Outlook client for iOS, but only for Office 365. So if you have an Office 365 business account of any kind, small business, small business premium, enterprise, whatever, you can download this app, sign in with your Office 365 credentials. It makes you uh, use an app pin because with a native app, there's no way to determine that the uh, underlying OS is requiring a pin, so they can't do that kind of uh, policy-based requirement like you would get with EAS. But it's a full Outlook experience, like a full Outlook offline experience. And so you get this Windows phone-looking email client, which I think is kind of amazing. You get the people, uh, contacts management, and you get your calendar, uh, all inside of this one native app. Uh, and so for people who are using iOS, it's it's sort of like the experience you get on Windows Phone, although on Windows Phone, those things are all actually separate apps. And of course, they work with other email sources as well. But it's, it's an interesting uh, expansion of their collection of mobile apps for other platforms. And so if you're using iOS in particular, uh, you now have an amazing range of Microsoft mobile apps that work both with their public uh, cloud, you know, uh, consumer-oriented services like uh, Outlook.com and SkyDrive and OneNote and all that stuff. But you also have these apps that work with Office 365, the business uh, versions, including OneNote, SkyDrive Pro. There's a SharePoint Newsfeed app. There's a Link app. There's all kinds of stuff. It's really kind of amazing. And now with Office appearing on iPhone, being Word, Excel, PowerPoint, now you have Outlook as well. I mean, you're you're kind of getting a full Microsoft experience on an iPad or an iPhone these days, and that is a a significant change. And uh, that it has the Windows Phone look and feel. I love personally. Some people might be freaked by that a little bit. There's tiles in there, and you know, Windows Phone style uh, typography. But it's a it's a great little app, um, and it's a, it's a nice little bit of Microsoft DNA that you can put on your phone, like that alien from Prometheus or whatever. <laughs> but it's it's. It's a really strange thing. It, 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 does this mean that uh, Office for iPad is imminent? Or is I this a stopgap measure? No, I, I think you're going to see the full Office. Well, not full Office. I think you're going to see at least Office Mobile soon, as they did on iPhone. Yeah. You know, mobile versions of those apps. And when you combine it with a, a pretty full-featured version of OneNote, and then all of those other apps I mentioned, including some I probably missed, um, you, could get, you get like the full... Microsoft experience on these Apple devices now. It's kind of crazy. It's a bummer because I I can't use it. Uh, I have an Office 365 subscription, but it says I can't use it. It's only for the business for the version. business. So, so I have an Outlook.com Microsoft login. Now, it says, no, you, you but can't with Outlook.com, so there's a couple of options there. Obviously, you can use the Apple apps to hit your uh, contacts, mail, calendar, and all that. But Microsoft does make, I believe, on uh, iOS, uh, don't they make an Outlook.com client, or is that only an Android? I don't know. They do. I could be wrong. So this, I'm, this I'm, I'm, isn't work with the subscription that I have. You have to have the business subscription. It has to be a business version, yeah. Right. And I'm hearing from people who have, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Exchange on-prem, for example. They're like, I don't understand why I can't access this. And I, right now it's a, it's a perk of the business versions of Office 365. I wouldn't be surprised. And this doesn't they, yeah. count as one of your five installs? No. No. No, no. No, 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 no. No, just a perk. Just a perk. Just a freebie. Just a little something-something. 
Um, yeah, nice. What? It's nice. Yeah, it's nice. It's very nice. I would love it's to use nice. it. It's nice. Nice. <laughs> Enterprise pick of the week from Mary Jo Foley. Yeah, my Enterprise pick of the week is a little bit hard to explain, but let me give it a try. Um, it's Windows Azure desktop hosting licensing ch changes. I can't even say it, right? <laughs> so I, uh, I'll tell you why this matters first. That might be the best way to go at this. So up until now, if you wanted to run uh, remote desktop services from Microsoft on a Windows Azure virtual machine, um, you couldn't really. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could run two sessions on an Azure VM that way, but that was what you were you were stopped at. And so that's why a lot of people like Citrix and other hosting companies and larger enterprises couldn't have hosted desktop running on an Azure VM. But now you can as of July 1st because Microsoft changed the licensing terms. And you still have to jump through a lot of hoops and buy some uh, new kinds of client licenses to do this and all. But it's very interesting for uh, companies who want to do things like have the Windows desktop available to users um, as a hosted service. You can do this now. You can't do it right on top of, you can't put Windows desktop on Azure in a VM. You still cannot do that. But you can now, through Windows Server on an Azure VM, host the desktop. So it sounds very convoluted, but... Um, it, it lets, you, lets hosters do some pretty interesting things. Like uh, in, in a session at the Partner Show this week, one Microsoft official said to said to the hosters in the room, hey, you, know, you want to differentiate, differentiate yourself from Microsoft with Office 365? You could run Link and have it run on someone's iPad by doing this whole crazy RDS on Azure VM thing. So it's a way that people are going to be able to have full desktop access on different devices, not just on Windows devices. Uh, but you, but it's only for people who are really ho uh, largest enterprises um, or hosters. But still, very, very interesting they changed these licensing terms. Hmm. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. Ha, ha. <laughs> All right. And your code name of the week? My code name of the week is something uh, called InfoNav, I-N-F-O-N-A-V. It's short for Info Navigator, which was a secret project Microsoft was working on for the past couple of years. It was actually funded by Bill Gates's office. It was like so high priority. It was a Bill Gates thing. And what it is, is a natural language query engine. It's, it's one of the things that's built into the Power BI service that Microsoft recently announced that lets you type into a uh, a browser or something like show me all the top classic songs in the past decade and know what you meant and and how to uh, you know kind of what songs what classic means um it's this is the technology that's embedded inside there that does it and it was developed uh together by the bing team microsoft research team and the sql server team they all worked on this together and what's really interesting to me about this is it's not known as InfoNav now. It's now known as Q&A inside of the Power BI tool. But Steve Ballmer called out the word InfoNav in his reorg memo. He, he said, we've got all these new tools coming with Bing, Excel, and InfoNav that are going to be really interesting in the new Microsoft going forward. So that makes me think InfoNav probably isn't only going to be for like SharePoint geeks and Power BI geeks. It's going to also be showing up probably in some other Microsoft services that we don't know about yet. Mm. So keep your ears peeled on InfoNav. I shall, I shall, I shall. And now, if you thought Hawaiian pizza was <laughs> disgusting, <laughs> you're going to love Hawaiian beer. I love Hawaiian beer. pizza. You yeah. don't like Hawaiian pizza? No, I don't. <laughs> Paul, what do you, what's your position on the... Uh, that is the Canadian that is bacon an only alliance, and I pineapple. will have nothing to do with yeah, that. Yeah, me too. I okay. love pineapple I, and I love pizza. They don't go together, though. I love yeah. pineapple on pizza. I think it's a girl thing. I never saw a guy that likes ham and pineapple devil. on uh, pizza. Okay. Well, pineapple shouldn't be heated in any way. <laughs> I know. Well, oh, uh, yeah, wait a minute. Actually, that's not true. No, you like it on some things. We went, we went to a, uh, a Brazilian steak restaurant in San Francisco that Ooh, had grilled. Yeah. No, that's yeah. Different. Pineapple with cinnamon on it. Pineapple. That was fantastic. Ooh. Yep. Yep. So yeah. So okay, this, all the guys this, in the chat room who happen to like this crap I'm are not saying like, I'm not that. Not going to admit that. <laughs> are saying no. They're saying, "What are you nuts?" Good. Good. 
So, yeah, my beer pick is called the Flying Dog Pineapple Saison. Mm. It's a Saison style beer or, uh, you know, kind of like a uh, bubble gum-ish flavored kind of fun. <laughs> That's what Saisons are kind of. They have that bubble gum flavor, which is weird, but tasty. And this one really, you, you smell it and it's like, wow, I can smell the pineapple and you can kind of taste it a little bit too. And it's from the Flying Dog Brewery in Maryland. I really like it. I think it's a really good summer beer because it's just got that like little pineapple hint and um, very fun and light. Good, good beer for a day like today in New York when it's 98. Yeah, I heard it's pretty hot out there. Oh, it's so hot here. It's so You know what? You didn't even break a sweat. I'm so impressed, Mary Jo. I think did. I did. <laughs> you didn't say anything. You were just a trooper. Oh. Yeah. Trooper so Paul yeah, would have been bitching. And my Paul. I, I think I've got like an Boston, air conditioner and a fan hitting me. I'm in the middle of like this yeah. oh. weird tropical storm thing. I know. He's it's got so a hot. Sharknado in his I have office. Like, like icicles coming out of my nose. Ah, <laughs> uh, my friends, we have come to the end of a fabulous edition of Windows Weekly. Thank you, Paul Thorat. Windows uh, Super Site. WindSuperSite.com. And in scant minutes after he files... <laughs> his uh, his uh, quarterly earnings blog so post. Mm -hmm. He will finish his book, which you can I watch. Can, right, can you watch it in real time at uh, windowsphonebook.com? <laughs> Not in real time. But <laughs> That'd be fun. Maybe the next book. You I'll, see I'll it. put yeah, up my camera should. on the keyboard. Yeah, I did that. I, I think I just saw him type the word Windows. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, now on the on the site, if I go to the site, is this in chronological order? So like, yeah, you so just like finished Maps update. and Location Point Two. Yep. Okay. So as soon as you see the next post, folks, it is done. So, well, done. Done is a relative term, of course. <laughs> no book is ever done. Yeah. 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 Or to do. Good going. Winsupersite.com and, of course, windowsphonebook.com. Mary Jo Foley writes about Microsoft. I, you know, I was just reading your bio. I never read your bio on your website. Frequent contributor to television and radio shows as well as podcasts, Mary Jo Foley writes all about Microsoft for ZDNet at allaboutmicrosoft.com and is a mighty fine gal. Oh, thanks, Leo. <laughs> we do Windows. I have a Leo stamp of approval. Uh, mighty fine. Oh, I love this show. Are you kidding? I hate Windows, but I love you guys. Uh, well, when you That's all I ever day. wanted, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> that no, was no. I can't wait though. That was to all I cared about. I gotta say, no. I, I use my Acer a lot, actually. That's kind of my home computer. It's a. Uh, I like it. I like the form factor. Anyway, you can uh, you can watch us do this thing live, roughly 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. 1900 UTC every Thursday on twit.tv. On-demand audio and video also made available after the fact at twit.tv slash WW for Windows Weekly. And, of course, wherever finer podcasts are aggregated and delivered directly to your device, such as the Zune Store, as an example. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. See you next week on Windows Weekly.